Kyle, thanks for coming on. We appreciate you taking the time to have a conversation with me. Would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself before we get started? Yeah, so my name's Kyle. I have two YouTube channels, one called Christian Simplicity. That's more like a lifestyle channel talking about minimalism. And then I also have a channel just called Kyle where, you know, I talk about atheism, Catholicism, Orthodoxy, Protestantism, Muslim, basically any belief. But um, yeah, looking forward to our discussion. Cool. So the title today was Atheists versus Christian Ethics and Young Earth Creationism. Could you tell me your position on those and jump right in? Yeah. So I think that their Christian ethics are better because there are no ethics on atheism. I think it always leads to moral anti-realism. And then after being, you know, I used to believe in evolution. I used to be an atheist. But after, um, you know, going to college, I took some classes on ecology and I started to learn about the difference between micro and macro evolution and then the problem with the dating methods and then um, watching debates and just learning more and more and studying the like um, you know the most cutting edge uh, science on the subjects and I started to just more and more doubt the beliefs of oh it's, the earth is billions of years old and that we came from monkeys and so now I'm say I'm a skeptic on that and I'm a young earth creationist. Okay, cool. Um, so first thing, there is no morality on atheism. I don't know why you think that. Yeah. Um, well, just to, just a preamble. Um, most academic professors are atheists, like 70% and like 65% are moral realists. So 65% of academic atheists, philosophers believe in moral realism. You don't need God for that. I don't know why you think you need a God for morality. Well, I don't think you can ever be epistemically justified in any of your ethical claims. And I've heard you say in the past that atheist ethics are better than Christian ethics, but this kind of begs yeah. the this begs the question because what is better? The morality is better. I'm not sure. Like what begging the question is when you have a premise in your argument that is the same as your conclusion. So I don't know how that yeah. would beg so, the question. So what is better? Um, everything: the epistemology, the ontology, the methodology, the moral system, the moral outcome. Um, the understanding of morality, the logical basis, like literally everything. No, 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 you're not understanding. What does better mean? Better in what way? Atheist ethics are better. When I say yeah. better, I mean one thing. When you say better, you mean one thing. Is there any objective better or is it just T-Jump's idea of better? Like well, and be you've all better, better can mean lots of things. Like epistemically better means it has a better justification. Um, ontologically better means that it has a better ontological grounding it could mean methodologically better means there's a better methodological justification for it like you can mean better lots of things could be better well like you said in the past that oh atheist societies are better that's that's, that's the question i'm asking you is what better. about atheist societies are better better in what way what does better mean i understand you know the epistemology i'm talking about specifically ethics what about atheist ethics is better than christian ethics well when comparing societies, you compare um, murder rates, crime rates, abortion rates, uh, those kinds of things. Like that's not so, a, that's more like a um, an outcome comparison, not a morality comparison, because models of morality aren't societies; those are different things. So you're saying they have better atheist societies have better outcomes? Is yeah. that what? So what do you what do you mean by a better outcome? What is a better outcome? For example, uh, less crime, less death, less uh, less teen pregnancy, less abortion, less murder, less. Why? Why less... is that? Why is that better? Why is that better? Um, well, again, this now you're changing from an epistemic question or methodological question to an ontological question. Two different subjects. You're confusing okay. the two different subjects. Well, no, no, like no. If you're I... talking about societies, the question of what makes something better is a different question um, and that's already been answered. So if we're asking what is a better society, we already have an answer for what makes something better that's less crime. But so if you want to ask what better? makes something better, that's a question of what is a moral system, which is completely well, a different question from what's the better society. There's two different topics. So you don't well, have to I, ask I, both at the same time. Okay. Well, I, th I was just asking the meta-ethical question. Uh, right. you, you think the outcome of less crime all that stuff i mean i would agree with okay, that that's that's not a meta meta ethical is not outcome outcome and meta ethical are separate things so you have to ask okay, no, either no, no, the okay. ontological statement of what makes something moral or you have to ask the outcome question which society is better those are two separate questions 
Okay, now I'm just asking what makes something better? What exactly about um, less murder is better than more murder on your system? That's what I'm asking. Uh, my view of morality is uh, less imposition, involuntary position of will is good. Murder is an involuntary position of will, and so less murder is good. Just because someone will wills it? Just because, is it, I'm just saying, how? then that's just subjective. That's just your opinion. No, that's not how subjective works. So simply saying a principle and then you saying it's subjective doesn't make it subjective. What, what do you think the word subjective and objective mean? Well, a subjective means coming from, not coming from an external stimuli. Objective means coming from an external stimuli. No. Yes. No. Subjective <laughs> means stance dependent. Objective means not stance dependent. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with stimuli stimuli it stimuli does. is by definition subjective the, the there's lots of definitions for it but not coming from an external stimuli is one of them and on your no, worldview that, not. that, that, yes. that literally is incoherent how is like, that incoherent you, there's you, no you such thing real, as external up, stimuli that's not how it, yes like that's, there that's, is. Stop, stop talking stop talking um this is an episte epistemology question like all of your senses are subjective like if you see something it's sub it's a subjective experience there's not like the fact that it comes from you seeing the tv which is potentially external doesn't make it objective that's dumb it's still a subjective experience but there's objective, an objective there's what, an objective uh, reality that exists outside of the mind when you and yes, i look at the number seven okay. uh, seven exists outside of the mind <laughs> i don't agree with that but i yes there is an objective world how do you know that well, no, no. Stay on one one topic. So yes, there's an okay. objective world. I agree. Okay. Um, the definition of the word objective doesn't come from objective stimuli. That doesn't make sense. It's not okay. not one of the definitions. So, so objective it, means it is. no, it's not. I, I'm qualified in philosophy. You were not. You thought that okay. micro and macro evolution was like the cutting edge um, scientific progress in biology when it's literally not taught in any academic field whatsoever. Yes, it is. Look at I've got no, it up right here. This is a PhD in bio in That's microbiology fact, from wait, harvard written by a phd is not well, cutting edge work in the field cutting edge work in the field is published academic papers they have not published book, academic written, papers wait, that's why they wrote a book no no that's not how books work um anybody can publish a book academic peer-reviewed papers micro and macro evolution aren't in any of them they're not accepted in any academic yes, papers are. no they're not in kid 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 this is literally pseudoscience macro and micro evolution are the same thing anybody who understands biology understands those are the same thing there's no difference like then only how, only people who are ignorant of biology think there's a difference so you have biological you, you've studied biology yes quite a bit okay do you, do you, what's your qualifications I've studied it. That's, that's the quality. <laughs> I've, I've studied it too, and I'm looking to the PhDs. Can you name a single PhD that know, that that uh, believes what you are teaching? I name I can name a bunch. Richard Dawkins, bunch. Uh, okay. Francis Doyle, um, just anyone in the field. Every single oh, academic professor who publishes I, in the field. I've got a bunch right here. I've got. No, you don't. I do. I have Nathaniel no, Jensen. No, no. I, just Google macro versus microevolution. I have, it is a pseudoscience. You, do you, do you want me to pull up? You can look Nathaniel up. Nathaniel Jensen you, isn't academically published in the field anyway. He's a pseudoscientist. Nathaniel, I, I know that name. I've, I've debated this with uh, Standing for Truth. Nathaniel Jensen is a pseudoscientist. Jensen. Okay, let, we're getting off track. We'll, we'll talk about young earth creationism later. But w when you say, okay, let's just talk about outcomes. When, like when I say a better society, I think of one thing. When you say a better society, you think of one thing. Is there an objective better society or is it both? Is it just your opinion? Is it just like you like Harry Potter and I like uh, a different thing? Like, no, is it no, just opinion? So there's, again, outcomes and moral meta, meta ethical theories are two separate things. So outcomes and meta ethics different. If you want to talk about meta ethics, yes, there is the view that there is a correct meta ethics that describes morality. And what we do is we look at the evidence and we try to make a model that represents the evidence. Well, what about the, you? I mean, I've taught, I've heard that you know what the is ought critique is. So how exactly what from evidence that, do you get how the world ought to be? How do you get? What does that have to do with like, so, so the evidence is moral intuition, moral progress, um, philosophical problems, the is ought is one of them, um, moral dilemmas and What's looking at the progress? patterns in those things is the evidence. Moral progress is the consistent change in patterns of moral intuitions across time. So, so this is like the patterns of evidence. What do you think 
is the patterns of evidence of morality. Well, there is a revealed objective reality and objective ethics, but you're just saying everything is based on pattern. So what is, yes, what's that's how evidence works. Evidence is literally based on pattern. So what do you think the evidence of morality is? That it was revealed to us that we have objective morality on your, on your view. Could, could you be more specific? So you think the Bible says so is evidence of morality or something? It's one of them. Yes. What are there's the other ones? Of, I mean, God wrote the law in our heart. I mean, there's lots of ways that we know um, ethical statements, and it isn't just, oh, just someone's opinion. It exists outside of us, just in the same way that logic. Okay. And, how, and, and, how, do we, how do we know? You say he wrote it on our know? hearts. What is, how do we gain access to that information? Well, there's lots of ways through prayer, through um, studying, through um, referring to the church. But we'll, we'll, <laughs> wait, what, um, so by prayer, I gain knowledge of morality. I'm not following the logic here. How does prayer... isn't you isn't that what you just said? You said mental intuition. How is that any different than what you said? The difference is that we have an extra layer of proof because we have revelation. We have we have a God that revealed himself and we have good reason to believe in objective. It's a good question. So the difference here is that when we use the term moral, it refers to certain kinds of sensations or thoughts and not other kinds. Like if I see a rock and I see it like knock your cup over, like we don't use the word moral to refer to that, right? We don't we don't call that moral. But if we see somebody kill another person and say, oh that that we call that moral. And so the words moral refer to certain kinds of things and not to other kinds of things. And so prayer seems to be of the rock kind, um, not of the murder kind. And so the word morality would not apply to those kinds of interactions. So I don't see how you can get moral knowledge from from a non-moral, morally inclined action. It seems like in order to gain um, knowledge of morality, you would have to gain evidence from the patterns to which moral language refers um, and not to things that moral language does not so refer. So what do you mean? By, how does how do you get from evidence? What about evi what evidence are you talking about where you can get normative statements, where you can get morality? Can you explain that? No, no, those come from patterns in the evidence. The evidence is moral intuition, moral progress, moral dilemmas, and philosophical problems. And then we find patterns in that. Um, we try to make a principle that describes those patterns. And then once we have a principle, then we can infer the grounding. And from the grounding, you get the normative stuff. So uh, no, because what what about a pattern? Yeah. What about the uh, the brute fact of an abortion? It doesn't tell you if it's right or wrong. The evidence doesn't tell you if it's right or wrong. Like uh, explain yes, that. That's kind of what it does do. So the way a hypothesis works, you have a hypothesis, and the hypothesis doesn't tell you if it's right or wrong. You just say this is my hypothesis, and then you say once I have a hypothesis, um, you try to infer things in the future that you could discover patterns. Tesla pictures, whatever. Wait, 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 wait. So, and then once you discover those, if if you dis discover they are correct, that um, is evidence that your theory is the right one. You're, you're you got the correct answer. How do you how do you discover if abortion is right or wrong? By having patterns in morality and testing. You just keep saying. You just keep circulating and saying the same well, thing over and over not, again. That's yes, the correct it is. answer. Pat, you keep saying patterns, patterns. Yes. Okay, what? Okay, an abortion <laughs> happens. You you have an hypothesis. Science cannot say, an, is my hypothesis is an abortion is bad. That's no. not in the realm of science. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Like, How do you literally yeah. Google moral naturalism? And yes, it is. Like moral naturalism is the position that moral statements are discovered or answered by science. It's like literally the the position. So but, what about? So, so, so it's it's it works the same way as any other hypothesis. You say, no, if I it. think. Um, this moral principle, whatever it is, is the correct moral principle, then I can infer that the pattern we see in moral progress will be this in the future and in the past, yeah. et cetera. And then so, you can look. So you'd agree with me, you know, what? human life has an inherent dignity. That's why we had to get rid of slavery. That's why we had to get rid of abortion. We need to keep further value, human rights. Yes. Yeah. Value. So are you against abortion? Mm, I think that uh, killing any conscious thing ever is always immoral. Why? But it can be justified in some cases. What about it being conscious gives its value on your system? That's the conclusion of the evidence, uh, as I see it. As you see it, exactly. It's your subjective taste preference, bro. Because... Bro, bro. Everyone has to look at the evidence and then make a conclusion. That's that's literally how evidence I know. works. 
Yeah, but is, so, is so there when any you look at the evidence, you conclude God. That's your subjective interpretation. Like the, I don't understand. But, okay, but someone is objectively right. It's not just yes, a bunch. Yes, that of is correct. Things. That's right. That's that's the point here. Is having each person having a subjective experience isn't a critique of anything. One of them is still going to be right. So it's just saying, oh, that's your subjective experience. Like, yeah, and I can still be right. So saying it's so how how can you be how, argument. how can you be right? On, on your how like what makes you if any more my right than me? Principle corresponds to reality. That would make me right. Oh, what? Okay, but a human life having value. How does? What do you? What do you mean? How does that correspond to reality? In, well, there's lots of ways world. it could correspond to reality. It could correspond to a platonic object. It could correspond to a higher emergent property. It could correspond to a strongly emergent property. Okay, but none of that gives you value. Abstract. None of yes, that gives it does. you value. They, they all no, literally do. So, no, it doesn't. so, so here's a problem that most theists have. They don't understand what value is um, and what grounds atheists. it. So, well, we do. That's again the consensus of experts in the field, atheists. More well, then why didn't the majority? Wait, 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 wait. One, one thing at a time. So, um, in what way do you think God gives value that a platonic object would not give value? Well, because human life was made in the image of God, so it has an inherent dignity. But on your worldview, we're just random. What, that's no, no. You got to answer the question first. How does God give value that isn't given by platonic objects? Because on platonic objects, we have inherent value. So you no say inherent that, value in, in the brute fact of an object. Uh, that that would literally be what inherent means. Um, if where inherent. where is the value? If I look in a test tube, where is the value? What? What value would be like a higher order emergent property? So it was like where health. is it in well, no, no. so why, like asking, what's, what's where wait, we stop, stop so asking like where is the health in an object yeah, that isn't like you can you can like measure the health and it's this particle like no it's a yeah. system of a combination of things in the system so like this is not a hard question so but again it, you haven't answered the question why do how do you think God gives value in a way that is better or more supported than a moral naturalist view of ethics well because on on your view it is completely subjective on How our is view it, it is revealed it is objective it came um from god and, and you're just saying oh this platonic form it just says value but people can the atheist what does them... what 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 is the academic definition of subjective versus objective morality there's lots of there's lots no of no the, when it comes to morality no, normative stance independence is that the objective academic definition of objective moral truths? It, it depends which one you're looking at. There's lots of different definitions. Stanford Encyclopedia so of Philosophy, the Oxford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, any academic textbook on morality, when the academic professionals talk about the subject, if they say objective, does that mean stance, independent, normative truth? Yes, from an external stimuli. No. Yes. Where's I'm just I'm looking at the Stanford Encyclopedia right here. I'm not external stimuli exists nowhere in here. Like no one even gives a shit about that. It's not a word used in anywhere here. In any it just means normative stance independent maintains that normative reality, like descriptive reality, is never grounded in or made the case, even in part by a stance toward it. Normative stance independence entails that normative facts are not made true by anyone's cognitive, I don't know what that means, or cognitive stance. This is, this is okay. the, there's, did, did you hear any external gibberish nonsense in there? No. Yes. That's what, yes. That's what it's saying is that it is, it is outside. It is by its very definition. External. There is no external. It's getting stimuli. caught up on these little, little words while missing the entire meaning. There, there what? is no inherent value uh, in, in, in your worldview. There is no one. Okay, where that, do you get that value never, that didn't exist. What do you like? Try to follow the line of thought here. I'm asking you the definition of academic philosophy of the thing we're talking about. And you're like, you add in this external thing that is completely not add, in that no. definition. Like external stimuli really? was not in there. There's no stimuli. There's no one mentioned stimuli because stimuli is it completely said, irrelevant. Stance independent means yes. it's outside. <laughs> Why is that? Okay. So yeah. the fact that it exists outside is ontology. Stimuli is epistemology, how you know something. So whether or not you know something, like you could not know anything, like there could be zero stimuli and it could still be true, right? It'd still be objective. Like if we have no stimuli of something, it could still be objectively true. Yes, because it? it's a stimuli that's from outside. If, if there was no humans, there would still be something. If there would there's still be stimuli. no stimuli, zero stimuli, Do you, can you it mean, still be true? Th that means nothing exists, which... Are no, you saying that? What What do you think the word stimuli means? Stimuli is like a sense experience. 
okay, but that requires a human to sense it. But I'm saying that even if there was no humans, certain things would still exist outside of the human right. mind. So you don't need stimuli. Stimuli is just an irrelevant word here. It just does nothing. No one cares when it means objective stimuli not required. Stimuli is not required for objectivity. There is no reason to have that word in any definition of objective yes. because if it's objective because there has true. to be something occurring for something to be objective it has to come from something outside otherwise no there's nothing right. I, I mean i agree it does have to happen yeah. objectively but it, you don't have to stimulate it it doesn't have to stimulate the senses there's no stimuli required right you don't need stimuli stimuli is not a part of that definition right you don't need stimuli for it to it, be objective it has to come from some. Okay, if it doesn't, if it's not. I under, from, yes, I agree. It yeah. has to come from somewhere. You do not need stimuli. Is that correct? You need something. A stimuli. Yes, you need something. You do not need stimuli. Stimuli is not what you need, but you do need something. It's not stimuli. Correct. <laughs> like you need like a stimuli. If why? 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 So can't deluded, it? you can't admit you were wrong on this. Like this is such a problem. Stimuli is not required. Like just admit you're wrong, and so we can move forward. Like you do not need stimuli. You do not need a stimulus of you any need kind. something. You need something. That's which from, is, yes, you from. need something which exactly. is not a stimuli. You need objective it's not reality. T jumps definition of stimuli. Yes, okay. it is. Are you using, there we go. Okay, what is your so definition? I, what is your definition of stimuli? Stimuli. Is it is it, is, is it not sense experience? Because I'm, am I missing something? No, it's just anything that exists outside. There is a phenomenon that exists outside. All right. Wait, Let's what, move what, on. What, no, no. Um, stimuli is like a thing that evokes a response from an organ or tissue or something. That's no, that's is. your specific definition of stimuli. So what is your definition? I literally just asked you. Stop talking about my I already said any, any phenomenon that exists out. It, 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 it's, just, it's just something that exists in the world. A stimuli. That's a very unique okay. definition that I've okay. heard I heard. We're just getting caught up on definitions. So well, I yeah, it's kind of important if what you're saying is gibberish using the academic definition. It's not, you it's made not, up your own definition. No, no, no. You no. Li you yeah, if you're you using the definition of a word that is completely different. Stop, stop, stop. If you look if up subjective right now. If you're using a definition right of a word that does not in any way represent what any academic uses the word to mean, that's going to make it sound like gibberish to someone who's using the word the way most academics use it, right? So no, so if you're, because if you're, the definition that you gave. Okay, look, we're wasting too much time on this. So we're not wasting so, time on this. Yes, I'm proving are. you're wrong and ignorant on the topic. That's so okay. it's valuable. Oh but more importantly, we need to clarify what you think you mean by these words. So I'm glad that you gave your definition. That makes more sense to me. If you think that stimuli means any a stimuli st is something that exists that outside the, the mind. official definition of something of a stimuli is something that is caused something causing. Okay. There you go. Let's move on. Something so you, causing. That's no, that's a cause. Like, no. Like, what? Okay. Something causing. You can look up stimuli, stimulus, something stimulus, causing or regarded. A thing or event oh. that evokes a specific functional reaction in an organ or tissue. It does not say that. It says something causing or regarded I, as I causing literally as just Googled the word. I'm Googling, and I'm Googling it right now, too. Are we looking at two different Googles? Come on. This is a waste of time. No, I, 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 I'm all to share my screen to pwn you more. It, it, it's a fun can pwn. I, can, I share, pwn. can I share my screen? Yes, you can. Share your screen. I don't need to share audio. Share. Stimulus. Derp, 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 derp. Stimulus. A thing or event that evokes a specific functional reaction in organ or tissue. Oh, God. What, what happened? I, I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. Okay. Remove source. The, the share screen is the arrow button. There should be like a mic, camera, arrow, a screen with an arrow in it. I think it's like the S key. S key, let's see. Uh, okay. Okay, can you see? Yes. Yes. Zoom in. It's, very, it's zoom in. Yes. Can, can oh, hold the control button and scroll up. Mouse scroll up. Okay. Um... Yes, but look at subjective, not caused by external stimuli. Right, right there right. on Google. Wait, what? That's that's the definition of subjective or stimuli. Yes. What? What are we? Right, this is Google. This is this is a, the the definition of subjective, not caused by external stimuli. No, we were just talking about. Look at something cause or regarded no, no, as cause. I, I, I Google what is the definition of stimulus? That's what we're going for. Stimulus. Yeah, I want stimulus right now. Do you see it? 
Okay, but look at this is a waste of time. Let's move on. Come on. Look at it says right there. We know. Hey, okay. Is... Okay. So definition of subjective on Stanford Encyclopedia yeah. is is not that. Okay. 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 Let's move on. So. So, so okay. So, so you're you wrong said in both. the past. Okay. If you want to say that. So, but it's, but so the reason the reason we were bringing this up was that um, you said that um, atheist morality is subjective. Yes. And God-based morality is objective. Yes. Um, so if atheist morality is based on a platonic object or an unknown law of physics, those are things which are true externally to human opinion, which makes yeah. them what? They exist outside of us. They're objective. They're the truth. Okay. So my, my what I want to talk about was you... Wait, wait a minute. Said, you just admitted that it's objective. So if atheist it's... models are, are those things, they're objective. What? No. What? No, no. Okay. No. No. Because the no. I mean, they. I look at. They can get objective truth claims about certain things about the world, like logic, but they can't be epistemically justified in it. Okay. Well, let's 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 address that as a second claim here. But you you agree we can have objective morality without a god because if it's no, based on a, no, a law of no wait, 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 go, go back ethics to is you... completely ethics is completely different. And even in using logic, what? they're they're utilizing principles. Go back. That can't no, be justified. Back. So, so whether it can be justified is a difference. That's epistemology, not ontology. We're talking I, about ontology here. Can atheist models of objective morality be based in a thing which is independent of the mind, like a law of physics, a platonic object? Like those things could ground morality, and if they did, they would the, be. Phys, you can't get morality from physics. This isn't. Yes, you can Google moral naturalism, but again, well, what about moral naturalism gives you morality from physics? Tell me how you get, what, get the essence physics. of morality. If it's grounded in a law means that it's grounded in that law. So if, if the, like whatever what? grounds morality is the ground of morality. So it's like saying if it's grounded <laughs> in a platonic object, morality is grounded. But there's in a nothing object. about a platonic object that tells you if it's right or wrong. If I, yes, it does. If, if I should work of... out, what is, how does a platonic object tell me if I should work, work out or not? Because should... whatever is right will correspond to the nature of the platonic object. And so if it doesn't correspond to the nature of the object, it's literally the definition of immoral. Like this is not hard. What? Like the same thing, it's the same way God works. If something is, doesn't correspond to God's nature, it's immoral because it doesn't correspond to God's but nature. we have knowledge because God has revealed. How do you have wait, access wait, 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 to... That's, to... That's the epistemology the question. Again, yes. ontology, all you need for an objective morality is something that grounds morality, which is independent of opinion, right? And platonic objects, by definition, you need are to be independent of opinion. You need epistemology too. You need to be justified. Yes, in your... I agree. I agree yeah. we do need epistemology. But the first point is ontology, if atheists ground morality in a thing that exists independent of opinion, that would be objective, wouldn't it? But nothing about physics gives you morality. Nothing about biology. Wait, stop, stop. One topic at a time. If it's ground, if laws of physics ground morality in a way that we don't know yet, morality is a law of exactly. physics we don't know yet. There's wait, wait, no wait, 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 wait. That would mean it's subjective, isn't it? That that's that would be mind independent, stance independent. If you were somehow able to have access to that and know that, but how would you know that? Nothing about a okay, physical okay. law. So, so, so it would be objective. So So even if we don't know it, that's still an atheist morality that would be objective, not not. You subject. don't know it. You just refuted yourself. How again, would you again, know it? You don't. You don't need to know it for it to be potentially objective. So, if it does exist, it is objective. So we have atheist models that would be objective if they're true. These would be atheist models that are objective. Now the question is epistemologically, how do we get more yes. evidence of it? That's, That's a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, we we look at the patterns of things that moral language refer to, and if there are patterns in these things to which moral language refer to, we can try to infer what grounds morality. So for example, imagine if we're, we're on a boat, imagine if we're on a boat and we want to know what direction the tide is going. And I look around or I like say, you know what, it's easier for me to paddle in this direction. I seem to be going faster. That would be evidence towards like, well, maybe the tide is going this way. I could look at the other boats. I could say, oh, these boats are paddling faster in that direction, or they tend to go in that direction. I can use that as evidence to try to say, oh, the tide is going that way. I can look at um, other cultures throughout time. I can say, oh, look, these cultures paddled in this way. And that would be evidence for what direction the tide is going. I could make a consensus of all of the ships all throughout time and be like, look at all the patterns and the ways that ship traversing the ocean has improved over time and that there's a consistent pattern in the way people travel and we now have faster ways to go across the ocean. This would be great evidence for the tide, wouldn't it? Okay, but that's not great evidence for morality. That's so great evidence for, for physical laws, not ethics and morality. These are totally different things. And you're so if someone them. believes 
there's an objective morality which affects human minds in such a way that it causes a consistent change over time like you know the tide and we can see patterns in these changes through cultures over time it would be analogous to the tide in that we could look for evidence of this pattern affecting us by looking at cultures and their changes through time couldn't we no, you're totally missing the question I'm, a I'm asking. What's the point of even following the tide in the first place? There's no reason you need to give a reason for, oh, why are they following? Why ought what? they follow the tide? What? That it's is what I'm asking. And you totally, you just keep going off. No, on, no, no. On so random. morality you're is a truth claim. It's an is claim. Is there objective morality? Yes. Whether you ought to follow it or not is irrelevant to the truth of the it matter. No, but we're talking about the ought. I'm saying you no, can never no, get an ought. Not, you can no, never tell not. anyone oughts, how to, what is more ought. come later. First is is. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and you can never wait, go wait, wait, from wait, wait, ought wait, wait, to wait, wait, is. Yes. It's a non sequitur. It's the other way around. You can't get from an is to an ought, but you can. That's what I said. You can't get from is to an ought. You said you can't get from an ought to an is, but it's a separate topic. You can get from an ought to an is too, but that's a separate topic. The point here is that in order to know what morality is, you start with a factual claim. Morality is X. You don't need any oughts. You need zero oughts for this. You do need oughts. I, I, you do I, not. The brute fact yes. of a truth is useless if you can't tell you no, if you no, ought to no. do it. Just now, try to me, try to use your brain on this one. Let if you, something say, you, say you, come on, I've let you talk so much. Come okay. on. So you if you stab someone, it causes them pain. Okay. What about that pain says we ought not to? It's just a non sequitur. It'll always just right. be pain good. doesn't get to morality. Exactly. Oh, it's pain so doesn't get to oughts. how to exactly the tide leads us somewhere. Okay. Why ought yes. we follow the tide? You're saying it's a I don't, pattern. I don't, okay. I don't know. So so if something is moral, I don't care if it's, we ought to do it or not. It doesn't make it. That's difference. what I am is, interested in. No, no, no. Just, just one step at a time. I'm trying to walk you through just basic philosophy here. So <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If I say morality is X and there's a pattern of morality, um, this is a truth claim. So if you don't correspond to that pattern, you are being immoral. Now, I have not said ought once. I don't need oughts at all. Yes, you do. No, I don't. No, you I don't. said atheist ethics Stop. are better than Christian ethics. Yes, that you're I saying... don't need oughts for anything yes, I said. Yes, you do. You, so... have to, you, have to, you have to go back into my premises. Which one of my premises, if we say morality is X, and it's a phenomenon, and we discover it, why would I need an ought to make it true that this is morality because if you, the, you have the truth you think you have the truth you can never tell someone that they ought to follow it there's no reason to there's no ought because you're not interested in the ought but that's I'd stop 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 i don't care to does not having an ought make it false so let's say that god's nature is morality but there's no ought. He hasn't told us to do anything. Does that he make it not morality? He hasn't told you an ought. He's told. Try, try, try to follow the try to follow the analogy here. So say God has a nature, but he hasn't told us to do anything. Does that mean his nature is not morality because he hasn't told us to do anything yet? No, no. Right. So right. it's still it's, morality. So so yeah. whether there ought, you don't need the ought. It's still morality you, you, whether he okay, told no, no. us to do you, anything. See, we're arguing two different things. You're arguing if there are objective. Eth ethics and morality, which we both agree on. But what I am saying is that you can never say ought statements on your worldview. I can. It's subjective for you to make no, any no, ought no, no. statements. So, so try to follow. I'm not. I'm getting to the oughts. They come next. First thing. Can okay, is there so just, objective morals? Yes. So so yes, from naturalism, we, it's the tide. There are objective yeah, morals. We're following the pattern. You can't get an ought from that. I didn't say you could. So stop jumping the gun. Wait patiently. Go step by step. I've waited patiently. Wait, 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 I've given you so much time no, to talk. No, Just... you haven't. Like you, you kept you kept wasting time not addressing the question. Yes. So we have morality. We have a pattern. We've discovered morality. It's true that this is morality. And then you can say, if this is morality and you want to be moral, you ought to do it. There you go. It's called a hypothetical no, imperative. There's no reason to do that on your worldview. Why? Just because it if exists. If you want to be moral, you ought to be moral. Exactly. It's up. It's your opinion. If you want it, right. you can. If, there's if no you reason. To, there's you no can. reason to. That's correct. There's, even even if you were right, there's no reason to. There's no reason to do anything no, because there is no ought. If you want to, that's view. a reason. That's literally a reason. So the ought's that's, there. Yeah. That's like matter. I like pizza. I like pizza. That's literally your right, argument. Right, right, I like that, pizza. You haven't refuted the argument here. So I still I have objective morality. It's true that this is moral. I do I literally no. prove that you've admitted that. Yes. No, I'm saying that it's okay, possible. Okay, let, me, let, me try to, let me try to break this down for you. Exists. Why do you think you need an ought to have objective morality? Can you have because objective it, morality without an ought? Because, yes, but it is useless. 
Okay, so dumbass. And you can never I can have, have stop you can talking. Never have I'm going to mute your dumbass. You just admitted I can have objective morality without an ought, dumbass. No. So you admitted I can have objective you morality. You can never be epistemically justified. I don't give it's a shit. Arbitrary. That's not the question, dumbass. That's the if question. I I'm have asking. objective morality. I have objective morality. Problem solved. Whether or not I have an ought, you can never or how make, I think you ought really shut up. To shut do it. up. If, whether or not I have an ought or how I think it relates is irrelevant because you've already admitted I have objective morality. That's all I need. Not you. No, I'm saying it's possible because objective morality does exist. But on your worldview, you would never know, have access to it or know it because you just admitted it. You're if not interested tied, in it. If it's a thing I'm measuring, then I have access to it. If there's a pattern in reality to which Nothing morality about the pattern responds. Nothing you an ought. Yes. It, again, you don't need an ought. You've already admitted that, dumbass. There's no consistency to your oh argument. You've gosh. admitted you don't need an ought for morality. So you can I never, have morality. I have access to morality. I don't care never, if I need an ought. <laughs> but okay, if we're debating... Oughts don't make things true. You don't need oughts. I have morality. You've lost. You, But there's, you can never be just... I never said that. I said objective morality exists. And, yes. But you can never be justified in any yes, of your knowledge can. claims about morality. A yes, tide... Does not tell you that you ought to follow the time. Wait, idiot, idiot. Oh my God. If you admit you can have morality without oughts, and I have patterns in reality to which that morality oh. refers, I have access to it. Your oughts don't make it not justified. I now have a justification um, no. for the morality. I have That's morality. I, I have a justification. You don't need oughts. There's no That's oughts. That's not what in I this. said. I said objective morality exists, and whatever yes. thing you come up with is subjective. It's arbitrary. It's ad hoc. You've lost the debate at that point. You just said there's no oughts. Why you ought admitted to, it I was objective. To you. Wait, wait, again, you're so stupid. You're not even comprehending so, your own what? argument. So I you admit no. you admit so you I, can have morality. Wait, let me let me say you something. Admit you can have morality. You no. admit that we. I well, said morality exists, obviously, because there is objective. Yes, but I say you and, can never have and access. If you I can, can justify your knowledge. Stop talking. I'm just going to mute you. You admitted we can have morality. It can be objective, potentially. If it's a law of physics, it's independent of the mind. It's potentially objective. And if this thing causes a particular set of actions in humans, like the tide would cause particular actions in boats, then we have access to it. So now morality is objective. We have access to it. We can measure it. We can make predictions off of it. And I don't need any odds for that. I so, have objective morality. Me, I have access to it. I don't need odds for that. Your no. argument that I so need that, odds, you would have to make a justification of why you would need an odds to either have an objective morality or to have access to an objective morality. Otherwise, the odds don't matter to pattern, your argument. Patterns don't get, tell you what is... It, it, you can never get... It, it like you can come to false conclusions just based on patterns. Like It's a pattern that calling someone stupid is wrong, yet you keep calling me stupid. So, I mean, yeah. So it's not, we, it's not we how pattern works. Yes, the fact yes, that it patterns is. can yes. be wrong. Humans, humans have all seen that calling people the stupid. The fact that and when patterns they're losing an argument, they call wrong. people names. Stop talking. You're a grown stop adult. talking. I muted you. The fact that patterns can be wrong doesn't make them not evidence. Patterns are still evidence, even though they can be wrong. But wouldn't you say you could come to false conclusions just blindly following a pattern? There's a pattern that nearly every civilization was religious. Is that pattern right or wrong? Every civilization was religious. So yes. the pattern must be true. There you go. I just no, disproved you. No, 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 no. So again, your argument was is the pattern could be wrong. Therefore, it's not evidence. That's wrong. I'm saying you wouldn't have access just because there's a pattern. Okay. I Can I just ask you a hypothetical? I want to ask you a go hypothetical. For it. Go okay. For it. So I've heard in the past that you're a utilitarian, which is no. a moral, which is a moral no. system. Not well, a you're based on pragmatic and what is good right no not. so okay then what are you uh, i have a my own more model of morality it's a kind of utopian model it's not a utilitarian oh, model. utopian so okay but what okay, would you agree with the definition though that we need to maximize the good for the most amount of people is that your definition no then what be okay. utilitarianism okay so what how how, how is your uh, morality different my, my morality says that any involuntary imposition of will is immoral, not to maximize involuntary imposition of will or maximizations are immoral. It's any involuntary imposition of will is immoral. So utilitarianism says that you should maximize something in such that, like if you have an option of killing five people to save 10, you should kill the five and that's moral. My model says killing anyone ever for any reason is always going to be immoral, even if it has a positive outcome of saving X number of more people. So well, that's... So well, utilitarianism well, well, is pragmatic, like you said, where it's saying that uh, a maximization of a greater number of people would be moral, even if the, there's a consequence to some minimum number, whereas mine says any minimum number of damage is still going to be immoral. 
So you and the other atheists, they say the same thing. Oh, yeah, our patterns say this. So why is why is your system any different than any other atheist? Because some of them would say that it's better to, um, you know, kill kill those five people um, or whatever to maximize the good. And they're they're saying, oh yeah, it's because of the Platonic forms. The physics says that this is morality. So how is yours any different? Because um, you have a you have a minority position. Not most atheist philosophers do not have your position. Well. Obviously, but that's most atheist philosophers aren't utilitarian. Um, so the fact that people have different positions, one no, is I know. going to be better if it uh, has what makes more yours better. To reality. What makes yours better? Because you're all saying, "Oh yeah, the I think, physics." Just I think says mine. This. I think mine better corresponds to the patterns and the evidence. That's what makes it better. Better. Well, my I just say that my system better corresponds to reality. I mean, it's just would it's just it better. These, yes. Yeah. So my system's better because I say so. That that's what you're saying. No. So if it better corresponds to the evidence, that's something that we can measure or test in some way. How does yeah. yours better so, correspond to the evidence? So we can look at Pew Research and see that people who live a Christian lifestyle, they're have happy, they're happier. They're more involved in the community. They vote more. They have more kids. They suffer from depression less. They suffer from drug use. Therefore, Christianity ethics are better. Or they actually have more drug use. And um, no, and that's actually, yeah, they do. Have you looked at the peer research? I have. Okay. Like, have, have you? Because yes. the data shows that it's only the case that uh, religious people are more socially engaged in communities or countries that are majority religious and communities or countries that are majority atheists. The atheists are actually more socially engaged and the religious people are more depressed because it has to do with social cohesion. Um, these tests have been verified many times and show that no. even the though... Where... Wait, wait, wait. So the statistics that you brought up about like depression, it's true in religious majority countries, um, not true okay. in secular majority countries, but the crime statistics are true in both. So in both religious and non-religious countries um the religious people are the majority of the criminals are disproportionately criminal or disproportionately um get divorces disproportionately have what? um psychological problems are just no atheists atheists have a higher divorce rate than couples that pray together no, couples who pray don't. together have a less than one percent divorce rate pray together yeah that's you know so we're pray together religious daily. yeah yeah that's that's a different statistic religious um, is actually higher. So religious people who get divorces are higher. Religious people with teen pregnancies are higher. Religious people um, with lower education is higher. Religious people with lower IQs, they, they just have a lower IQ. So I don't, I don't look for a specific, do people pray together on a daily basis? That's a very, well, I mean, that's a, that, example. I mean, that's um, a metric of how uh, religious people, I mean, if they're actually religious, they pray together daily. And no, those couples that's have, just, yeah, that's so. your subjective definition of what you think being truly but, religious is. That's a no you, Scotsman fallacy. So, um, no, if they don't, I mean, go to, many, if they don't, there, there are like many religions don't entail religion. prayer. Many, many, many religions don't entail prayer every day. That's not, well, I'm not, I'm not saying religion in general. I'm saying Christianity. Okay. Well, even in Christianity, that wouldn't be true. So most Christians don't pray every day. And well, I, yeah, that's, you right. call that's why I brought Christians. up the couples who pray. That's, that's why it's no true Scotsman fallacy. So if we're looking at yes, the data of religious people versus non-religious people, the crime rate is lower in non-religious people. The divorce rate is lower in non-religious people. Um, if you want to cherry pick some very hyper-specific data point that they want to pray together every day or something. We could pick a different, we'd have to pick an equally hyper-specific data point about social cohesion among atheists. So like obviously couples who have some kind of um, collective hobby that they do together every day are going to be less likely to get divorces. And so yeah. we'd have to pick some hyper-specific thing that atheists do together um, every day. And if we measured the people who do that thing every day together, they're probably going to have equally lower divorce rates. So there's than, not really a unique characteristic like that, that there is. Yes, there is. There's hobbies, yeah. like reading books together <laughs> they, or going bowling it's, together. It's not the Those same are the thing. Same. As, no. Yes, they're literally, either. literally no. psychologically the same thing. No, but, no, they aren't. Like, like literally Praying to a God on, is the same as reading a book. Oh, yeah. Great yes. Argument. Yes. Um, there are many neurological studies that show hobbies such as praying to a God um, are essentially simple reflecting on your own intuition in your own brain, which is no different from introspection or other kinds of hobbies that involve imaginary kinds of deliberation. So yes, those are psychologically the same thing. Um, but the point here is that if you want to cherry pick a specific kind of Christians who have a very 
um, tight knit faithful. hobby. Well, no, no, they have yes. a tight knit. The, the faithful part is here is irrelevant. The part here that matters it, is the part that they're doing something with their partner every day, which is very important to them. And if you pick a property among atheists where they are doing something with their partner every day that's really important to them, they're going to have lower divorce rates than partners that don't do but, things together that are really think, important to them. But do you think atheists have that type of hobby? I'm saying that praying together is yes, something that we that literally all, that no. we've done those days. We've done those studies. Oh. Yes. Like that's, this is a study that's very common. Do atheists have community building exercises and hobbies that are equivalent to religious ones? The answer is yes. No, there have been no dozens of centers. studies on that. Yes, there are. Like there are no, literally atheists. You go to an churches. atheist community center? No. What does that have to do with atheist I, communities? Because you can look at Pew Research and wait, see wait, that wait, most wait, atheists again, are your not argument going was is, to... Your argument was that couples pray together that's not going to a community center like uh, you don't even go to it's church every day many it's one of many examples of right, right. It, so so it it to make, wait, 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 look, how community. evidence works you have to make a comparative analysis between two groups so if you pick one particular statistic of one group like for example that they pray together every night you would need a comparative something that's equivalent on the other side going to a community center Every day together is not comparative to praying I know, together every day. I, know. I, I so never if said you they want, were comparative. I'm saying that I was so, bringing so it up as another example. So you need to pick example. something that is comparative. So stick with your original example. What is something comparative to praying together every day? It would be doing a hobby together every day in a secular community. Do atheists have that? Yes. Yes, they do have that. Yes, they do have community building exercises between couples that they do every day that is equivalent to two Christian people praying every day together. Yes, we do have that. We do have studies on this. Yes. It doesn't happen at the same frequency. Just like, that's why I brought yes, up the it second Yes, it literally does. It literally does? Yes. Couples okay. have hobbies that they shared interest with, and the rate that they share that interest on a daily basis is approximately the same. Okay. Is they, and they have studies about that on divorce? On divorce? Uh, no. there. I don't think anybody's... Dizzy. selectively chosen do couples do a particular hobby every day and how that impacts divorce on a secular group i've well, never seen there, that study there's a lot of studies on family and like what leads to a good family and what we have seen that the <sighs> things traditionally associated with a christian lifestyle lead to lower divorce rates one of the things i brought up was um you know praying together daily going to church together um you know reading the bible all, all of this stuff and maybe you can oh, for find divorce rates we have that if if uh, couples do their hobbies together on a regular basis, that does lower divorce rates, whether it's prayer or bowling. Okay. But I'm just saying, uh, in, in general, the hobbies associated with Christianity are not ha practiced at the same frequency. Like, even if you do believe that we evolved, wouldn't you agree that we evolved to be religious? Isn't that a pattern that you see in the yes. world? So, so why would you get rid of that? if we evolved for this and it has helped our uh, survival and we can look at atheist birth rates and they have the lowest birth rates. Japan is having more. Wait, what they, what, what they, is your, I'm not following your argument here. So I didn't say anything about getting rid of religion. I said it wasn't as good. So if we're trying to measure outcomes of a society, secular nations are better, but I didn't say we'd get rid of religion. Yeah. Religion is a lot better than a lot of other options. I think it's worse than secularism, but it, it is better than other things. Like I don't, I don't understand where, how you got to this statement. Well, you're an atheist trying yep. to debate Christians, trying to yep. make people not religious. So it kind no. of seems like no. you're not. My, my goal is nothing to do with converting people. My goal is comparing epistemologies and moralities. It's I don't care what people believe. Like if I converted everybody, I lose my job. So that would be against my interests. What do you mean? That would be beneficial to you. You'd have more people paying into you. I debate How... Christians. If I, there are no Christians, I have no one to debate. No, but still, you would debate people that have different views and they would follow you. Like, they're like, oh, this guy's really smart. They would follow him. It's not like, oh, he won in a debate. Now I'm never going to talk to him again. They'd probably still listen what? to you. The, I, I have no goal of changing Christian minds. My goal is to make money by debating them. Like, I don't. I don't care if I change people's minds. That was never my so goal. So I guess I guess that goes back to the question: is you don't really you, you don't really tell anyone what they should do. You don't make any odd statements. No, nope. you're not really interested in that. Nope. Oh, okay. Well, I just because you don't it just, need it. Like, why do you keep thinking that you need that to have morality? You haven't made an argument for that. Be, well, because everyone makes odd statements and they can't be epistemically justified. That is my whole point. Is that why it's do you need to have that for morality? What is your argument no, I, that you no, need not, to have? That's that? not what I'm saying. I'm saying that pe ever that people make ethical claims. They make odd statements, and and they they need to be justified in it. 
Yeah, I'm not saying, oh, you can't make an odd statement. Therefore, there's no objective morality. I'm saying that everyone makes odd statements. It sounds I don't like make odd statements. Okay. So you don't. So I shouldn't listen to you. If you don't want to, I don't care. So but what I don't, I'm still not following your argument here. So my argument is, is that atheist morality is better because it corresponds to reality better. And you say that, well, you don't have odd statements. And I'm not following how that makes it worse. Oh, well, no, no, no. Because I was saying that you can't have access to that. And even if it was true, which again, you wouldn't have access, you wouldn't be able to know that, that you can never make odd statements. And you've agreed that you can't make odt statements. Wait, wait so the first thing the, is well, access. Well, if if morality is literally demonstrable, if we can observe the effects on the brain, that's we have access. But what the second part is the part I'm asking about is well, what about the what, brain tells you morality? Remember the tide analogy? Like if morality is objective and it affects us and it affects us in a pattern, we can see that pattern expressed. But nothing can cultures. tell you that we, like let's say TJ is the captain wait, 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 of the wait, ship. The, the, ought, the ought statement is a separate, completely unrelated question here. So I know, but that's the access, question. See, I guess, wait, 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 wait. So, I understand so what you I, mean. If I have morality and I have access to morality through observations, why do I need the oughts? Why do I need the ought thing? You haven't shown okay, why well, one, you, you don't have access because let's say you're the you're the captain if of morality is a force and the force yeah. affects people and we can watch how it affects people does that give us access to morality how do you know that that's morality wait, wait, the wait, fact wait. that it's happening wait, wait. you don't know what morality no, 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 no. is just assume for the sake of an argument if morality is objective it's a force and it affects people and we watch those effects and we can see the pattern would that give us access to morality no, because you're just seeing a pattern and it would just be your opinion. Like we see this pattern, therefore it, okay, um, it's the, the same thing as the brain. Objectively like, caused by a moral law of physics. And we see that pattern. There are like, no moral laws of physics. That's that's you begging the question. So this is, this is just trying to get you to understand, would you have access if morality was a law of physics and it affected things and you could see the effect Yes, like gravity. If gravity affects things and we can see the effect, we have access to gravity, right? We see gravity does things, it moves stuff, and we see the movement. We can then understand gravity by watching the movement. So if the moral law of physics affects the psychology of people in a particular way and we can see that, we would have access to the law of physics of morality. Like but this access is all just means this like is all movies. based on a false belief that gravity is the same thing as morality. And that's where I, no, no, that, no, that's no, not, no. this is, this has nothing to do with the belief here. This is just basic entailment. No, it does. Would you have access to morality if it affected things in reality to cause a pattern here? That's the question. But morality doesn't affect anything. The, the it's, it, it doesn't like, it's not like gravity where you can see and test it. It's not scientific. It's not. So it, if, yeah, if it didn't affect anything, you're right. We wouldn't have access to it, but if it does affect something, but it, doesn't affect anything. Wait, 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 wait. Stop begging the question. You're begging the question. If it does affect something and we can see that effect, would that mean we have access to it? How would you see an effect of morality? You're saying brain, the brain, my brain matter. How does wait, that get wait, you morality? It doesn't, it doesn't matter how you see it. If it, does. it causes an effect and we see it in whatever way that is, do we by definition have access to morality now? So if morality exists, and it causes a pattern in whatever way, who, who, who cares why? And we can see it in whatever way, who cares why? Does that mean we have access to morality now? I could think of a perfect example. Christ coming, all these prophecies. Yes, the effects are made known, so we have knowledge to that. There we go. That's a perfect example of how we would have knowledge of ethics. Is God becoming incarnate and and explaining revelation? What? What so, so the question was that's the only way if morality is like a law of physics and it causes effects in reality and we can see and measure those effects, would that mean we have access to morality? It's not like a law, a law of physics. I don't I don't me, care what you think. This is not about what you so, think wait, what I, morality is. This this is a question like all the skeptics, if, none of none of them said that physics and morality are the same. I didn't either. This is yes, this is a did. basic you, analogy. You this is an analogy. If it's an it analogy that case, does not work. Gravity is no, not the same as ethics. No, no, no. You, God, I don't, I don't like. Do you not know how analogies work? Like analogies I, I do, are a but thought this experiment. Analogy what, what, what is a thought work. experiment? What is yes. a thought experiment? It's a hypothetical. It's yeah. It's but this. Yes. It's, this yes, hypothetical. It's a hypothetical. Right, correct. It's a hypothetical to isolate a variable. That's what a, that's what a thought experiment does. So the thought experiment is if it is the case, so we're assuming it's already true. If we know if it is just a fact of the universe, morality is a law of physics, and it affected things, and we could see it, would that mean in this hypothetical universe, 
we would have access to morality. By effect, if you mean like God becoming incarnate and we have revelation, where it's morality very is a law clear. of physics, no gods. It's not. No, again, this is, wh wh hypotheticals. Remember, I know. try try to do hypotheticals. Hypothetical but, universe, it doesn't have to exist. It's a hypothetical universe that does not exist. It's in our imagination. In our imagination land, there is a universe with a law of physics, and the law of physics is morality. And in this universe, hypothetical, non-real universe, the people can see the effects of this law of physics just like people can see the effects of gravity. In this hypothetical universe, would the people have access to morality? Uh, we are bringing up a fairy tale that yes, it's is, that you, you it's admitted that it's mean. a fantasy. It's what hypotheticals mean. I mean, so how would you like? How would you measure it in this hypothetical universe? It wouldn't make a difference in whatever. No, no, way no, no. I'm, I mean, I'm interested. So, like, let's say no, no, this. No. Oh my god! Oh my god! So, the question here is like, would you have? I, under, I understand. What, what You're does saying, would you have no, access no. mean? What does would what does have access to something? If you mean? could have knowledge of it. Okay. So yes. I, I I no I understand what you're meaning. You're saying let's think of this hypothetical universe where just like we can study the law of physics, we can measure it, we can know it's real. Morality right. morality was the same way. We could measure it right. and we could and, know and we would have, that it was if, real. If that was the case, we'd have access to it, right? We would we'd be able to access it. Yes, in that, was and, and yes, in this, fa in this that's, fantasy. That's all, that's all I wanted. That's, I yes, know, but it's, it's not like it's that. But, yes. we, we, because it's a hypothetical. If it's the case that morality is like this, and if it's the case morality causes an effect we can see, we would we would have access to it. And my entire model is that morality is a law like that, which does have an effect on people, which we can see in moral progress throughout time. That's my hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And so if that is the case, which hypothetically, we don't know, that would mean we would have access to morality. But we don't live in that universe. Well, Physics that's that's, is that's your position. But again, this is just, yeah. just to show that I have a model of atheism, that if it's true, objective morality, we have it and we have access to it. We have both of those things. But nothing about measuring. You are saying that if gravity was, if morality was like gravity in this fantasy universe, but in this universe, morality is not like gravity. I think there's it is. No physical, what is no, your What is your evidence that it's not like gravity? There's no phys. We can physically test and repeat and see what is uh, if if physics work. You know, we have our hypothesis. Yes, we, we can. can, keep we, can, we, can see, we can see patterns objective. in moral progress. So we can see. That. No, because totally different societies will come to different conclusions. It's all based on culture. Like no. you're like yes, because you, no. an atheist, are going to have different morality than a Chinese atheist. The, the fact but you guys are both are... operating on the same assumption that oh, if we just no. it, it's just like physics. It's no, no, no. no. So like the fact that there are remember my tide analogy. There's a bunch of different ships, and a bunch of different ships are going in different directions. They're not all going in the same direction. If they would, that'd be easy. But there's a there's a pattern. If we look for an overall overarching pattern of all the ships, we can say oh look. There's an objective pattern to the tide, even though some ships are going in different directions. So the fact that some ships are going in different directions does not mean they're going it's not completely evidence different of, the tide. of directions. And just yes. okay, everyone could be wrong. The tide, just a tide. That's I'm impossible. saying the fact that the tide is happening, maybe we're all meant to just like end all humanity. You wouldn't know because you're just following the tide. You're not really thinking outside of the tide. You're just following the tide. That's all you're doing. So, so if the tide objectively exists and causes an objective pattern, and I say to know this pattern, I should follow the patterns in the ships. That would be evidence that the tide is going in that direction. So, if morality is going is in the right wait, direction, wait, 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 that's wait, what wait, I'm asking. Wait, wait, wait. Um, if morality is an objective thing and it causes us to go in a specific pattern, and I can see this pattern, that would be evidence of morality. So, that's that's that that's but all asking, access. We have access know, to it. But I'm asking if the it's it's better if it's better to follow the tide. How do you know you're following the right tide? That's Maybe like those... asking, how is God moral? It's like if the definition of moral in this context is it is the good. So asking so wait, why but, is moral wait, the good? But, but it seems like you're saying whatever the tide is, like there's this general progress and you are measuring it and that is the good. That is objective. By its very definition, you're saying whatever the tide is, whatever social consensus is, then that is uh, morality. So I think whatever is the essence of goodness is causing this pattern. Therefore, this pattern is directionally pointed towards the goodness. And what is the goodness? How do you know it's not leading? Maybe the entire tide is leading toward the badness. How would you know that? Because you're just um, blindly following the tide. Evidence. So, so we'd say that right. if the patterns of morality follow this pattern, we can make novel predictions and get the patterns correct. That is evidence of our hypothesis. Now, it's not 100%. You could be wrong. You could always be wrong. But that's not evidence that you are wrong. So you can still have evidence for your conclusion, even though you could be wrong. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm just saying you have no idea if you're on the right or the wrong path because you're just following no, the tide. The, the fact that yes. you could be wrong doesn't mean you don't have evidence. You can have probabilities. You have like 90% no, but I'm probability. Saying you have no access. Wrong. You're saying that the definition of goodness is whatever the tide is following. But I'm saying how do you know that it's actually leading to the good? Because I'm saying maybe this tide in humanity is okay. all leading to this bad thing and you yes. would never know. Again, you could be wrong. The fact you can be wrong, I admit, does not mean you're not justified in believing It's not just right. you can be wrong. You have no reason to even believe that yes, you're leading you towards do. the good. So if I think, for example, let's say I believe God exists. And if God exists, I make a prediction that in five minutes, he's going to give me a gold brick. I'm going to pray for a gold brick. It appears. Now, say a gold brick appears in front of me. That would be evidence of God. Now, it could just be leprechauns or aliens playing a trick on me, but I'm still mm -hmm. justified in believing that, yes, God did this because my hypothesis was God exists and I pray to a God and a gold brick appears and that gave me knowledge of the future I didn't have yet. And if I got that right, that would be evidence of God, even though I could be wrong, even though it could just be aliens or a delusion or something, I, that would still be evidence. And the same thing applies to morality. So even though I could be wrong that this tide is going in a different direction, if I think Objective morality causes this tide. And if it causes this tide, I will see this pattern of moral progress. And I discover the pattern. That is evidence my model is correct. Just like seeing the gold brick is evidence of God. The fact I could be wrong doesn't matter. Okay. I, I understand your view. You're saying that this tide, this effect that we're measuring is leading towards some sort of good. That is your definition of good. And I guess that's where we're just going to fundamentally disagree is because God, God, God is goodness and on my view, and then consensus or the tide is uh, goodness on your. So I understand that. I think no, we've no, talked. I think we should move on to young earth creationism, but I understand. Well, I, your I do want to move on to your evidence. So my evidence is I look for patterns um, in the phenomenon to which moral language refer. So moral intuition, moral progress, moral dilemmas, et cetera. And if I see patterns in that, I think this is good evidence of what the essence of morality is. And I want to know what do you think the evidence that tells us what the essence of morality is. What evidence are you looking at that gives us information that is um, better than looking at the patterns in the things to which moral language refer? Hmm. Well, I mean, I would just say that the pattern doesn't lead anywhere. Just pattern, it doesn't lead you to uh, anything. I would say on my worldview, on my worldview. So basically God, he has all these prophecies. He has revealed himself in history. Christianity is a very historic religion. He has came, he has revealed the law. So we have a very clear idea of what the law is. And if there's any uncertainty, he set up the church, the Orthodox church to guide us. We have, we are rooted in prayer. We are rooted in the church fathers, um, tradition, scripture, all, all of these things that are checks and balances that we know that we are following the good, that we are following God. We have epistemic certainty because God has revealed himself. He's made it honest. Versus you're, in my view, you're just following a tide that you don't know if it's leading you anywhere good. It's just a pattern that you happen to see. And I don't think you can get morality from that. And that's where we disagree. So my interpretation of that would be like, if you remember my tide analogy, like if I start with, I'm trying to figure out what the direction of the tide is and I start with myself and that's not, it's not great evidence, it's, uh, whatever personal experience, but then I look to my culture, like look at the ships around me and see what direction they're going. Um, it seems like what you're doing is you're taking a particular culture, which is just a particular set of ships of the Christian culture, the Christian identity and saying, which direction are they going in the tide? And you're basing the direction of the tide based off of that one culture. Whereas I'm basing it off of the consensus of all the cultures and the pattern of all well, the cultures. And so it seems I mean, like uh, we're using the same thing. Mine just seems a little bit better. Well, again, better. There is like better is going, it's going to mean different things to me and you. So I think that's the point where we disagree is we're both kind of presupposing some knowledge of the better of the worse and we're following different ships. I, th I think we can be epistemically justified in our ought statements, which are very important. Like the fact that objective morality, truth does exist. You need to have access to it. And I think it, we need to have ought statements. Otherwise, everyone is inconsistent because everyone makes ought statements. But I understand what you mean. But it just, yeah, it just seems inconsistent. Well, okay, so how does, from my perspective, a God-based morality is by definition stance dependent. So it would be by definition subjective. How well, does a God ground morality? Because I don't think it can. Doesn't doesn't seem to make sense to me the idea that God grounds morality at all. Well, you would agree that like logic and math, all of these things are objective and morality is objective. So it exists somewhere. It exists in the divine mind and ethics is that same way. Anything, ethics is God. Well, God that, would, is that would be 
I, so I agree math and logic and morality are objective, but mm -hmm. if they're exist in a mind, then they would not be objective. They would be subjective. No, I, I, a mind is just an analogy. There's nothing like God. God is totally uncreated. It's just an easy way for us to understand it. But basically it exists outside of us. It exists like the chemicals in my brain, the chemicals in your brain. We both agree that there is some objective morality and truth. The I guess the disagreement is how we have access to that and that how we make ought statements from that. That's where we would disagree. Well, I'm disagreeing on it. To me, it doesn't seem to make sense to think morality could be grounded in a being of any kind. Because God's, God's not a God's not a being. He's uncreated. Being being means anything that exists in philosophy. So any existing thing is a being. Um, uh, and so it's well, then, to well, wait, wait. But then on your worldview, you have you you have to ground it in something a being also. So. Yes. But I'm specifically so I'm being as a conscious. I'm saying conscious being in yours kind. It's kind of like a, a person. Uh, what would, would that does that work for you? Calling God a person of some kind? I mean, he's a person in one way. We believe in the Trinity, right? So he has he has a mind of some kind. I mean, one of one of desires, it, he has a, there's a hypostatic union in Jesus Christ, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. nothing so, there's so, nothing like God. But God also is the Father, which is. Um, yeah, so it, it, the point is, is that it's stance independent. We just disagree about. Well, that's the part I'm I'm not understanding. How can it be based in a conscious mind of some kind and be stance it, independent? It, well, you're thinking that it's like a human mind, <laughs> and God is unlike anything in the world. I'm just giving you an analogy to understand, to easily understand it. Well, I'm trying to understand. Like, if I gave you an analogy of a round square, you'd be like, "That doesn't make any sense." Like, literally, round is the opposite of square. And so, if you're saying well, that you have a mind who is a consciousness of some kind, but saying that's stance independent, those are like a round square. That does not make sense to say that those two can be the same. Well, again, that's not a, that's not a perfect analogy. The square. I'm just giving the mind as something easy to understand. There is nothing like God. I mean, we have a finite human mind. I can't perfectly explain it with analogies because there's nothing like it in the created world it's totally uncreated so well, yeah are you so, ready you want to move on to young earth um not little i want to go a little bit further into this to me it seems like if there is a morality and it's dependent on the stance of a mind or a consciousness in any way it doesn't need even analogous to a human mind in any way if it's contingent on a stance it is stance dependent that means it's literally not objective. So a law of physics would be objective because it's not up to a mind. No mind gets to set the laws of physics. They're totally independent of any mind, um, which makes them stance independent. They're yeah. objective. And so well, no, that's morality... what I agree. They're, they're stance independent. I'm just giving you an analogy, an easy way to understand it. Because I mean, you would agree that these things exist outside. I was just giving the mind as an example of how to understand it. Well, it's not... if it exists in a mind or due to no. a mind of some kind, then that would be not, that would make it I, subjective. I, okay. It, okay. It doesn't exist in a mind. It's like you just said, it exists. It stands independent. Okay. So if it stands independent. I was just giving you an easy it... way to understand it. Okay. So like that would mean that there's no say, God gets no say in the morality. That would be essentially what that would mean. Well, that it, like, it's very, like, God is logic. God is goodness. God is ethics. God is the very thing itself. It's just, you're, I'm trying to understand, trying to explain something that's totally uncreated. Well, and totally he, unlike anything in the I didn't say he world. was created. Whether he's created yeah. or not doesn't make a difference. The point is that if the truthness of what makes something moral Let's let's do the youth of Rhode Island. Is something good because God says it, or did God say it because He knows it's good based off some independent standard? Hmm. No, God is goodness itself. God is God is it, the goodness. Okay, but the question is: is is something good because God says it, or did God say it because He knows goodness corresponds to some set of facts? Well, it's both. Because God is goodness. That everything God. It can't be both. So, so like, if I say like I like what? chocolate. Um, that can't be objectively true for why like, can't the it universe. be both? I mean, there, let me just give you an example of something created where it can be both. You know, have you heard about you know, like quantum mecha mechanics, and you know how yeah. uh, there's certain um, particles that can be both a one and a zero, which seems to contradict all of this philosophy and law of contradiction. So, that's just one example of something that does not fit in our current paradigm that doesn't make sense, but yet it's, it's still true. Well, it doesn't 
quantum mechanics doesn't violate the laws of logic. Um, well, in, in a sense that it does, because I, I forget what it's called. I think it's like called a quantum particle or something, but it can um, be both a one particle and Particle duality is particle duality. Yeah, but it can be both wave a one particle. and a zero at the a same wave, time. It can be both a wave and a particle at the same time. Um, yeah, which doesn't make any... It, it does. The quantum, quantum logic doesn't violate the laws of logic. It's not... It, it was just one example. I'm just saying there's there's nothing like it. There's nothing in the created world like God. And so I was just giving an easy way to understand it. That that does not help understand it. That's like quantum. Okay, well, we okay, we we agree that it's stance independent. We just have different ways of justifying our beliefs. So would you like sure. to move on to young earth? I think Sure, why not? Okay. So you believe the world is billions of years 13. old. 13.8 billion something. Actually, no, isn't it 14 billion? Are you sure about 13. that? 13.8 billion. 13.8. So why do you think it's that old? Um, through the evidence and novel testable predictions of LIGO, gravitational waves, the cosmic microwave background. Um, How does that tell that it's billions? Uh, well, if you measure the speed of light um, and we measure the redshift of the light we see from the cosmic microwave background, we can measure the the age or the length of time it would take for light to get far enough away to have the rate shift that it has and we can estimate yeah. the age of the universe so, to be so you're 13. saying the light seems to be billions of years or billions of years old so the universe has to be at least that old is that correct uh sort of that would be the evidence yes yes it, has that's evidence. To, it doesn't have to but it's evidence yes but but haven't all these things only been studied for about a hundred years or so sure so what you're Why doing would the length of studying it affect the truth of it? well because you're you're examining a phenomenon that has behaved in a certain way for hundreds of years but what you're doing is taking a hundred years of a principle behaving in a certain way and saying that it must have never been changed it had to always function this way i mean is it logically possible that the speed of light slowed down that it sped yes. up yes. yes so on this view, if you're saying that with certainty that the Earth is billions of years old, you are basically taking a hundred. Well, there's years... no certainty in science; it's probability. It's all based on. Well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's why okay. I'm skeptical of the claims that it's billions of years old because what they're doing is they're taking this principle that has behaved in a certain way for a hundred years and they're extrapolating and say it has never changed in a thousand years, in a million years, in a billion years. It has behaved in exactly the same <laughs> way. And as someone who is skeptical of things, I can say, well, that extrapolation can never be justified. And so I'm not going to make a claim because I don't know. I can't say with yeah. certainty that it is billions. I could, it could have changed. It could have stayed exactly the same. Either way, it's an assumption. evidence it's changed. Do you have any evidence it hasn't changed? Yes. Well, okay. What is it? We test the speed of light constantly in all of our theories and the predictions come out to be correct every Did time. Did you test it a thousand years ago, a million years ago? Uh, no, but we don't need to. So if we have a prediction yes, that do. light has been consistent throughout time, we can make a prediction that, um, if for you... example, we'll only see universes form at about the 4 billion year mark or something like that, where we can say that um, we'll only see universes that are X amount of redshift and not more than X amount of redshift because it would be... Impossible. But they have actually, actually recently they found universes that are older than the Big Bang, which makes no sense. No, they didn't. They definitely yeah. did not. No. Yeah. no. But okay, okay. But this is what I'm saying is that you didn't study the speed of light a thousand years ago. Is it no, logically no, no. So, is it so logically so possible wait, that me, it did change? Is it yes? It's log logically so, possible. Just means there's no logical contradiction. So yes, it's logically possible. But the way so how do you know, how do you know? Because we have because lots of evidence that it didn't. We based on current assumptions. Based, based on current assumptions. Totally fine. Totally fine. So like, I can say that um, I can do a test that fossils exist um, thousands of years ago, because I can predict if fossils exist thousands of years ago, we will find Tiktaalik, a transitional fossil between a fish and a lizard, at this exact point in this exact field uh, between these strata of geography. And if we look, so this is before we know, we haven't, we haven't looked yet. We make a prediction that if evolution is true, if the world is tens of millions of years old, we will find this particular fossil at this particular layer of the strata and only this particular layer of the strata. And if we look and we find it, that is confirmation of the hypothesis, whatever it is. So if I can make predictions or hypotheses about as far back into the future or as far into the future as far back into the past as I want. As long as I'm able to predict things about the future I don't know yet and I get them right, that's evidence the hypothesis is true, even if I didn't wasn't able to test the hypothesis billions of years ago. 
So the fact that I'm able to make predictions about the future and give us knowledge of things we don't know yet, if it works, is evidence for predictions or hypotheses about the past, even though I wasn't there. But you can never know with certainty if it really did, because it could have sped up and that could have all happened. And based on our current assumptions, I agree. I agree. I agree. We can't know with certainty, but it's. Oh no! So that's all. That's what I'm saying. Is that like I don't know. I'm saying that I'm saying I'm not saying. Oh, it has to be six thousand years old. I'm saying I don't know. It's at least ten thousand to six thousand years old because we can look to other methods like history. Human history only starts around that written history starts 10,000, 6,000 years old. You don't find it weird that humans were around for 350,000 years and they just all dis discovered how to write at the exact same time. Like civilizations that were completely separate, the Aztecs, the Chinese, everywhere in the world just happened to discover writing at the exact same time. They did. So I'm saying that we can only safely assume I, it's only at least 10,000, 6,000 years old. You are relying on assumptions that cannot be justified. And while it may find results that are consistent, we still can never know with certainty to like if you made the claim that it's 10,000 bil billions years old you can never know that with certainty and so as a skeptic i'm saying i don't know it's writing, at least 10,000 writing doesn't give you certainty i don't know i don't understand it's what you're just one of the like. it's it's one of the other ways wait, 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 because... so, so if we look at human writing the oldest mm -hmm. human writing is slightly like 5000 something years ago from egypt yeah. and we didn't all develop writing the same time we developed it well around the same time. locations <laughs> plus or minus 3000 years um okay yeah or more because there's people that haven't even discovered writing yet in Papua New Guinea. They don't have writing yet. So plus or minus 5,000 years we discovered it in. Yeah. Um, that doesn't give us certainty that the world is 5,000 years old. Like, for example, we could have been created by magical leprechauns five seconds ago. You're so right. We can't You're be right. certain that the, we're the, you were, that the world is at least 5,000 years old. We don't even know that. Yeah. No, know you're right. Time. But we have but evidence, do we, right? The do we writing... have good reason to believe. Right. I say, right. you know, if you're right, let's say, the earth really is billions of years old. Well, I'm not incorrect in saying it's at least 10,000 to 6,000 years old. Well, well, let's no, say so I was going in a different direction. So I want to make sure that we can't be certain that the world is 5,000 years old, but the evidence of the writing gives us good reason to believe the world is 5,000 years old, right? Yeah, it's one of the evidences. Right. That's that's enough. So if we have evidence that the world is billions of years old, that's good reason to believe the world is billions of years old, even though we're not certain. So we, we don't need to be certain for either yeah. case. But if we have no, you good do, reason, you do need, don't you see the difference between speculating about what happened billions of years ago and what happened thousands of years ago when we have written proof that humans were around at this point? We have no proof that it's all about speculation and extrapolation. What do you think the difference here is? So if there's a kind of evidence that like humans, you're less skeptical, stuff, less skeptical. Yeah. Like well, you're no. willing to have more faith in saying that these principles have been exactly unchanged. No. Yeah. Well, I just think your position requires more faith. I'm not sure. I'm not following here. So we have a kind of evidence, human writing, and we think human mm -hmm. writing accurately dates back to 5,000 years thanks to yeah. carbon dating. Okay. I oh, think no, there's other reliable. ways that they tell that. Mm, nope. They can read the, yes, they can. Nope. Like the way we know that the earliest writings is 5,000 years old is because we can carbon date the rocks that they're carved into in Egypt. It's not, we there's can't other like, ways look at the writing. It. Nope. Yeah. No. What do okay, you think no. the other ways are? Because they can see the the writing styles. There's other there's other ways for them to, so, to see. So if there's if there's no prior writing and we see the first writing, how does mm -hmm. looking at the writing styles tell us how old it is? Well, we can see the rate of change in the writings, like how like how it changed in our lifetime. Like we can see. It, I'm just saying that either way, let's say that carbon looking dating at the is rate accurate of changing up to in language today, and you're trying to infer changes into the past based on how language changes today and you think that's an accurate way to measure time well no no no. because bo on both worldviews i'm saying that let's say carbon dating is we don't know if anything changed but we're saying on both sy systems they both confirm that it's at least this old and so you're right that it is an assumption saying that oh the rate of change because either way i mean if you wanted to be 100 percent skeptical you could say yeah we were only created five seconds ago we were created right now but um but uh like i'm just saying there's a, a level of certainty and i'm willing yeah. to have a level of certainty saying that confirming that okay carbon dating and the, the rates of change and writing styles and other ways we can say that it was at least this old you get rid of the writing and you're just putting it on the extrapolation so i'm just saying like in like it's it's more possible for you to be wrong because i'm saying it's only at least this old 
Well, so one, and also patterns, like pattern going in through the, the changes in patterns and language today happen much faster than they did in the past. So if you're going yeah. to try to infer time in the past, you would not get five thousand years if you tried to measure the rate of change in language today and infer back. Well, we've also been studying for it for a lot longer. We haven't just right. Been that's studying that's why it you can't. Years. That's why you can't use that as a metric to infer to the past because we do, well, there's no like exponential growth pattern of the rate of change in language that we can then infer in the past. It's completely random. The rate of change. In different cultures and language changes completely. I'm just saying speeds. there's lots of different methods that, of how they do it, but no. And also, but but what I brought up earlier was that the new like um, D, like studies on uh, DNA are saying that if the world was billions of years old, we would expect to see way more species than we do, and it only ever fits in a young Earth model. It's from those books and no, studies. No one, no one says that in, in biology. Well, Nathaniel, he has a PhD in biology from He's Harvard. Why would I? Oh yes, but I should listen to you. Who has no qualifications in biology at all? No, you should listen to the academic published papers in the field of biology. Jensen doesn't publish in biology. He's not. He's not I know, but other scientists biology. in his field who share his same uh, hypothesis do have research on it. And also, the, just because something is pure research, you realize <laughs> it doesn't automatically make it true. The majority of right. pure research just, is false. That just means it's peer reviewed. So like what yes. happens in peer review is that you present data to the experts in the field and they can contrast that data with their data to see if it's correct or not. So pseudoscientists aren't aren't able to publish in peer review because their data doesn't correspond to the other data in the field. That's the point is that the only point of peer review is that filters out pseudoscience. That's all the point. That's the only thing it does. But you know that the majority of peer reviewed papers are false. So that's not the majority of every everyone, every scientific theory was false. Like Newtonian mechanics was false. And they but were the, used they used wait, to be wait, considered wait, science, the, right? Yes, but again, so the only exactly, point of so peer, the, point, the point of peer review is to filter out pseudoscience. That's all it does. It doesn't prove anything. But you right. just said things that used to be in, considered pseudoscience have been correct, and that peer review. No. Yeah. That's not the case. So it's never yes. been the case that something that was considered pseudoscience that was rejected from peer review ended up being correct. Like no. Plate tectonics. Plate tectonics were yes. not considered pseudoscience. Yes, um, they were. In a, they were not rejected from here. Cigarettes yeah. use cigarettes use doctors used to say, "Yep, smoke a pack a day. That's the science." And now That's, we know that cigarettes wasn't are published in peer-reviewed papers. No, oh, so, I, but all the doctors and everything were promoting it. They were just saying, "Oh, just peer, peer, the peer review." Peer review is a specific process. Doctors say is not peer review. Peer review is a specific thing that involves... I know, but I'm I'm just saying the scientific <laughs> authorities and peer peer review is not. I mean, who peer reviews the peer review? And you're just saying, oh, it's pseudoscience. It's pseudoscience. But lots of things have been considered pseudoscience. Lots of things. I mean, Darwin, a lot of the things that he promoted were considered scientific, like all the um, you know scientific racism and eugenics. And that was considered the leading morality. This is where the tide is leading wait, us. Wait, 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 and that you're led going to Nazism. way off topic. The only thing I said was a peer review filters out pseudoscience. That's the only thing I said. There, there's, I didn't, no, no, I didn't say it's right. I didn't say that you- Then why are you bringing it up if it's not right? Because Jensen doesn't publish in peer-reviewed papers because it doesn't correspond you just to the said, data in the field. That's the, that's the only thing I said. Like, uh, there's nothing to do with like hundred percent correctness. He's not okay. he's not an expert in the field. That's the only point. <laughs> so a Harvard PhD means nothing. He's not an expert. Yes, having a Harvard PhD doesn't make you an expert in the field. Being able to publish in peer-reviewed journals in the field makes you an expert in the field. Do you think that the scientific authorities can ever be biased? Or do you think they're always just, they just want the truth? Yes, they're all biased. That's the point of peer yeah. review is to filter out the bias. So you, you think, do you think peer review, but, but you just said peer review can be wrong and we know the majority of it is false. So the, you just- the, the fact that it can be wrong and, and having a bias are two separate things. So the point of peer both. review is every individual has a bias and mm -hmm. every individual wants their particular theory to be right. Right. And so in order to filter out those biases, what you do is you take a paper or an idea and you present it to all of them and they all try to destroy it. They all say, nope, that's wrong. I'm right. And so mm -hmm. if every single person with every single bias is trying to prove a theory wrong and they can't, then that means that all of their personal biases have been filtered out because they were not able to use their biases to prove the data wrong. So the point of peer review is to filter out biases. Can know. the conclusion still be incorrect? Yes. You can and it's still wrong filter the majority out all the biases. Of the time. Yes, every, everything is all science is wrong the majority of the time. That's mm -hmm. that's fine. But again, peer review filters out biases. Jensen can't publish in academic papers because it's nothing but bias. He's not an expert in the field. So I agree, most scientists are wrong. He's just how, wrong. how do you measure that? Oh, they're actually not biased. There's no way to. There's no, no peer review they, on. They're, if they're all biased. biased. They're, they're all biased. So they're all biased. So you're saying the peer review is biased and it's also false. No, the peer review filters out the bias because it pits biases against one. But you just admitted like that. that 
you admitted that all the people who are doing it are biased. So yeah, that's so so we can filter out biases by pitting one bias against another. So if, if so one bias are biased, out. No. So like if everybody has their own bias, like everybody's mm -hmm. biased in their own way, they think their pet theory is correct. And you present a new theory of a different person. He comes along and is like, I got a theory. Now all of the other scientists are like, no, you're wrong. I'm right. They all have a bias. They all think they're right. And so if they're trying their best to prove that guy wrong and prove them right, but can't, that means all of their biases have been filtered out because they're trying to use their bias. They're using their bias to the best of their ability to try to prove that guy wrong and they can't. So that means their bias has been filtered out of the equation. Even though that guy had a bias, well, that guy had a bias, he wanted his theory to be right. That's true. And that theory was presented to all of the other people with all of the other biases and they tried to destroy it because they didn't want it to be true. But you don't know if they all tried to destroy it, especially since money That's has got so intertwined with uh, science. I mean, the science keeps changing. I mean, you have people like Bill Nye saying, oh, yeah, there's only two genders. But now the science says it's peer reviewed. Don't you don't. And this, oh, and they all, no, they were no, all no. against the bias, but the science no. just says there's two, there's, there's multiple genders. There's, there's thousands. That's a different of topic. So, so the way well, no, you know that works, the way you get famous in science is by proving everybody else wrong. Einstein, when he published his paper, um, everybody hated it. They thought it was wrong. They couldn't prove it wrong. He got right. He proved everybody else wrong and won. So the way you get rich in science, you don't really get rich in science, but the way you get famous in science is by proving everybody else wrong. Do you think they it's don't just like, what? do you think it's possible that maybe there was an Einstein and maybe there was people who, um, they let their bias get the best of them. Is that a possibility that maybe some, they, oh, he's pseudoscience, he's pseudoscience. You think, or do you think the peer review is always anti-bias and the Einstein will it's always, always win out? always anti-bias. I know, but I'm saying that. So like, you, I can give you, you examples of like Ludwig Boltzmann. Ludwig Boltzmann was the guy who invented the theory of the atom. Nobody, they all hated it. Nobody liked it. So they condemned him. They ostracized him. He lost his job. He committed suicide years later. None of his ideas were accepted. But guess what? The peer review won out and we accepted the atom. He was right. He was correct. Mm -hmm. Peer review would discover that, yep, he was right, and all the people with their biases were wrong. They couldn't prove it wrong. He won. So biases are eliminated through peer yeah. review. Yes. But do you think every bias has always been ed ed been eliminated through peer review? Or do you think it's logically possible that there are biases <laughs> that 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 never get through? Like it's don't you, you would agree it's possible that there, there was biases a bias that never yes. get through? Yes. I don't like know if, what if, that means. Like if they have a bias. And maybe like sometimes they went out and the truth wins out. But is it possible that something false continues to be promulgated even though it's been peer reviewed? Is that possible? I still don't know what you're saying. Like, is it possible that somebody had a crackpot idea that had no evidence that happened to be right? No, I'm saying what they do have evidence. And I'm saying that they are okay, they they are right. Is it possible that the bias is what kept it from oh, no. it's always pseudoscience? So you think it peer review has always been hundred percent successful? They're everything At filtering out bias. That's the purpose. Yes. Yes. So it's always had 100% success, success rate. At filtering out bias, not at yes. being correct. So, yes. So there's never, there's, you don't, you can't conceive of a, of a possibility where bias got the best of them and uh, a good study was uh, thrown away because of bias. The peer review um, always went out. Yes, that's kind of how technology works. Like if you prove your idea works and it, like if, if a guy invented a gun, um, the gun is going to take over. You but don't what, like bias it okay, out but, of the way. No, no, no. But something that is uh, more theoretical, like, um, I mean, Darwinism and like young ancient earth is an unfalsifiable position. And no, so it's not, that's very easy. Yes, to it is. Rabbits in the Precambrian would falsify Darwinism. But um, the point is, is that uh, evolution was extremely falsifiable, but it made predictions. It made successful predictions that was able to tell us about the future. There are dozens of them. On micro um, level, not the macro. No, at the macro level. So like one of yeah, the, the predictions micro. is at the macro level. No, 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 no. How do you, how do you have a, do you have a peer review study on how we got, saw the first yes. whale? The first how whale? Saw the first. How, so, how, how so, the first whale emerged. So, so a, pr a prediction would be like TikTok, predicting that we're going to find a transitional fossil between a fish and a lizard at this exact strata in this exact location before we find it. That's a prediction and it was confirmed to be correct. So that's a prediction that was confirmed. Okay. I mean, there was lots of, frauds like pill down man nebraska man a lot of these are still in yes, uh, biology yes, textbooks frauds. Today. like ernest hagel's fake embryo drawings that's still in biology textbooks yes, today they were frauds, i'm just i'm just saying just because someone makes, are not frauds 
I know, but someone makes, no, there's, it's still in biology textbooks today, but I'm just saying, yeah. don't you think there's current science that is going to be considered false later? Or do you think everything that you're, you're just worshiping the peer review? Cause yeah, yes, there know, are things that are going to be considered false later, but the evidence and the confirmations are still evidence. Now, if it makes a successful prediction out the future and is confirmed, that is still evidence, even if it proves to be wrong in the future. So like if new Newton predicted that the perihelion of mercury would be discovered or something and he got it right, that's evidence of new Coney mechanics, even though later we discovered he was wrong. The ability to make future testable predictions is still evidence of what you believe. So, yes, but you can have wrong models and come to right conclusions. Like they used to believe in static universe, that the universe had always existed until a Catholic priest came up with the Big Bang. And then even though their models, they were able to get reliable results in the static universe, but then a better model. So why put your faith in the just the newest science? I mean, the I'm one just saying that be skeptical. makes the most novel predictions. So, so the model that makes the most successful predictions about the future is the one that has the most evidence. Okay, but I'm saying there's times in history like the static universe that they would be proven wrong. And instead of just putting your faith, oh, the most trendy new science, you could just say, I, well, you know, it's great that we're speculating about this, but I'm just the not way, gonna. The way they were proven wrong was that they made more novel testable predictions. So the yeah. one that makes the most novel testable predictions is the one that is the most reasonable to accept. And until a new one comes along and makes more novel predictions, you shouldn't accept it because it has less evidence. So don't you think it's possible that a lot of the stuff we believe now will later be proven yes, false it's highly likely i yes. think that's so, definitely likely so wouldn't the, a healthy level of skepticism be warranted where i just i'm not going to say for certain if yes. micro and macro evolution because it's just this is just the newest model well, why well, it, it's rational to think that we will have updated models in the future but if there's a different model that has less evidence it is not rational to say that 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 model is equally or more plausible than the one that has more evidence so if there's a model that we've essentially proven wrong or has very little evidence like young earth creationism or the distinction between micro and macro evolution. Those are things that have no evidence. Um, and we compare that to something that has lots and lots of evidence like micro evolution and micro macro evolution are literally the same thing. Um, there's lots of evidence yeah. of that. Um, we should accept the one that has lots of evidence. Now it's possible it will be overturned or replaced by something else, but yeah, it's not going to be replaced exactly. by the thing that has less evidence. But no, no, but I'm saying over time, it's going to, it gets more and more and more evidence. And then that's how it disproved. But us right now, we don't know. There could be all of a sudden, I mean, I mean, I think we already think there is a lot of evidence, but I'm saying in the future, can you, could, could there be a future where all of a sudden, oh, there's this new evidence. I mean, I already think we have it, but let's say we have all this new evidence and actually young earth was wrong, was right. And uh, ancient earth, is that possible? Yes, it's possible, but there's yeah. no evidence of it. So like, well, not, well, I think there is, but I'm just saying not yet in your right, worldview. Right. So, so if there isn't any evidence for it yet, it would be irrational to believe it. Well, I think there is evidence, but I'm just saying you conceded that it was logically possible that in the future, young earth yes. creationism yes, of has course it is. The, the, the level of evidence that you would ask for. I think there is yes. enough but evidence. What, what, do but you I'm think, just saying, what do you think the purpose of saying that? Yes. So it's possible that mm -hmm. in the future there is different evidence. Yes. Therefore... Yes. Well, therefore, I'm just saying that it's not the best to just make these grand claims and just it's fine to speculate. I'm glad they're doing the science because I think, you know, we should always thrive to follow the truth. But I'm just saying, why put your faith in just the latest science? Like, well, I don't have any faith. I, I trust the evidence. Well, you do have faith. No. Yeah. You have faith. faith. is a belief on insufficient evidence or no evidence. Um, you, I believe the evidence. I know, but uh, like, for example, you have no idea of the speed of light change. That's a belief. That's a faith belief you have. Yeah, I have evidence that supports that. Like, I don't, you don't, I don't have evidence of what happened billions of years ago. That's a faith yeah, I belief. Do. It's called inductive evidence. So I can inductively test the speed of light now. And you know the problem of induction? Time. Yes, I do. It's still evidence, though. The problem of induction it's, doesn't You make can never justify inductive reasoning. Yes, you can. On your system. How? Um, it's because it gives us future testable predictions. Okay. Just because it's happened that way in the past doesn't mean it'll always happen that way in the future it or it's, it's always evidence. been that way. It's evidence it is. So uh, per, it's no, evidence. a perfectly logical person, a perfectly skeptical person would not use that. That's what David Hume was all about. You, well, yes. Every per, every every rational person uses induction. Induction is really important. Yeah. It's really good. But they can't justify it. Yes, they can because it no, works. They can. It's called pragmatism. Because it works. Okay, what is no because it works, but again, it it has worked up to this point. That's, That's evidence. It. So it only it only needs to work once. For I know, but evidence. I'm saying that it's a faith belief for you to say, oh, just no. because it's always. Wait, so, so if it works yes, once, that's evidence. I don't, it's not a faith belief. I now have a thing that gives me evidence that gives me a reason to believe it works because well, it worked once. It worked once, therefore it will always work. 
I, I washed my hands and, the, and Bitcoin the more went times, up. The more times it works, the more evidence you have. What is it possible? Is Let's say I wash my hands. I just want to clarify. Like The point here is that the more pieces of evidence you have, the more rational your belief is. And it's not based on faith. It's based on the number of times it's worked in the past, which isn't so, faith. That's evidence. So what I'm by, every, every time I pray, a miracle happens. It just keeps happening. That would be evidence. There's... That would be phenomenal evidence. I mean, just so, do that and I believe in God. So, so, so that it has to happen every, every single time, but I'm no, just no, saying, no, it wouldn't happen every time. Like the more, have the more time I'm just happens, saying the more evidence it is. every worldview has some level of faith. I'm willing to admit I have faith in certain things. You have, I don't faith have any faith. Things. I have zero faith. You have zero faith. Yeah, all well, of my the, beliefs are what, based on evidence. So the, the law of physics has to be the same in 10 years. It's going to be exactly no, the same. No, I don't, I don't believe in, uh, the uniformity of physics at all. No. You don't, what? Well, the, the laws that, of physics do change. Like the law no, of gravity just, changed. Uh, well, I'm just saying on on the reasoning that you were using. Do you think the speed of light will always stay the same? Mm, yes, that's a belief. Could based it change? Based but it could evidence. it change? All based on. Yes, but there but is. Will you just admit you have some level of faith? No, because that's still based on evidence. So faith is a belief without evidence or with insufficient evidence. And I have. I'm evidence saying you have insu insu insufficient evidence. Why you may would do, I have you may insufficient have insufficient evidence? Because you're just saying, oh, it's always been this way, so it always will be that way. No, That's, I'm saying that I've tested it multiple times across spectrums, and those tests um, give me a hypothesis that it's the same. And then from that hypothesis, I made predictions, and those predictions came out to be true. And because those predictions came out to be true, I'm justified in believing the conclusion that light has always been the same. But will it always be the same? I'm justified in that conclusion because the predictions were correct. In the past. Right. So, so let me, I'm just saying you have some level so of faith. You imagine have some imagine faith. you prayed to God and God mm -hmm. gave you a gold brick every time, a hundred yeah. times in a row or whatever. Are you justified in believing, let's say it's the Christian God, you pray to the Christian God and he gives you a gold brick. Are you justified in believing God is the all powerful creator of the universe? If he confirms all of your predictions a hundred times in a row. But it requires some level of faith. Yes, it would be a justified belief, but it would also require some faith. I'm saying it's like why? Seven, why would that require faith? Like that seems like evidence. Like you because made the, the, there's uh, there's uh, there's other reasons. Maybe the reason is because someone across the planet was praying for the same thing, and it can't happen in my hands. So just well, because it seems like you're defining faith as not having absolute certainty, which yeah, no that, yeah, that's what I'm defining it as. Well, you can never have absolute certainty. You can never, if you're, you can never be absolutely skept skeptical <laughs> because you would, you would give up uh, inductive reasoning. Okay. Well, no, and in philosophy, you don't need certainty for knowledge. So it's called fallibilism. It's the consensus in philosophy and science. You don't need certainty for knowledge. You can have knowledge without certainty. So you don't need that for, for knowledge. Yes, but every view it. still requires some level of faith. It's just, you can't no, be on your own. Knowledge, so you're saying, knowledge, if you have knowledge, you don't have faith, right? If you know something, it's not a faith-based claim. You know it. Knowledge. No. Right. Knowledge is, is it not possible true. that you have knowledge and you come you come to believe something true for a bad reason? That's possible. So you could have sure. yes, I'm just true, saying though. no, I know. I'm just saying that you have faith. Like if wait, wait, wait. So so knowledge, you can't have knowledge and faith at the same time. Right? No, you so, can't. That's what no, that's what I'm saying. Is you can have knowledge and faith, what? but I'm just I'm saying like it's like 70% knowledge, 30% so faith, faith. Is, faith is a belief on insufficient evidence, right? Something That's like one that. definition. Faith is just, it requires some level of uncertainty. But that doesn't make sense as a definition. So, um, like, I, I define faith as a belief on insufficient evidence. That seems to be a good definition for faith. Simply saying faith is not having certainty um, means that you have faith for everything other than I exist. Yeah, I'm just saying every belief requires some level of faith. And we just have I to exist. That. What what faith does that believe? And I mean, I maybe you don't exist. There's a possibility, right? How can I have an experience and not exist at the same time? I don't I don't know, but I'm just saying, isn't there a world that it's logically possible? I mean, I, I would agree with you, obviously, that yes. No, it's you, it's not logically possible for me to have an experience and for me to not exist. You can't think so, of a fantasy world where that happens? A, a fantasy world where I have experience and don't exist at the same yeah, time? No. In a in a fantasy world. No so, so fantasy. Can there be a fantasy world where I have a direct experience, but also don't exist to have the experience? Yeah. I mean, I, obviously this doesn't make sense in our world, but I'm saying in a fantasy world, wouldn't it be possible? No, I, I can't imagine a fantasy you, world where I have a direct experience, but I don't exist to have the experience. If I'm having an experience, I must exist to have the experience. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I agree in our world. Yes. Like, yeah, the, the transcendental argument I don't think, I don't think the there's self. any logically possible world where I can exist 
and have an experience, but also not exist at the same time. That's logically impossible. That would be a not logically possible world. Okay. And I'm just talking about a fantasy world. I'm just talking about hypotheticals. Well, so like in hypothetical worlds are usually classed in philosophy in several classes, logically possible, logically impossible. So like you're asking, can I imagine a world with a round square? Can I imagine a world yeah. with a married bachelor? No, I cannot imagine those things. I, I okay. literally, logical contradictions are things we can't, we literally can't imagine. That's what a logical contradiction means. It's yeah. impossible for us to imagine it. Okay. I'm not, well, I'm not, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know what the point is, but so you can have, yeah, yeah. So do you have any other questions? <laughs> What? Belief I, without faith. That was the point. It was like, I'm just, I believe I exist. I, I don't is, have is any faith. There's no every... faith. I have zero faith in my belief that I exist. Do you, okay. Do you have faith that tomorrow the sun will rise tomorrow? No. Okay. You don't have any faith in that? No. You I don't... have evidence of that. But doesn't that require some faith still? It could no. just explode. Look, do computers have faith? Uh, no, it doesn't have a, no, it doesn't have a mind. But so, computers have conclusions. They have a probabilistic conclusion. Here's the evidence. Here's the conclusion. Here's the probability is going to happen. They're there's just a, there's, there's, they're just repeating what is. They're not actually made. They're, it's not not right. like a human mind. So so like a computer that says the probability of the quantum particle um, collapsing in this state is thirty seven percent, and the probability of having it in this position is sixty four percent. Does the computer have faith? Well, no. It's like it has a conclusion based on evidence, right? It's just saying here yeah. is the deterministic conclusion, even though it doesn't know. It doesn't have certainty one way or the other. It has a probabilistic conclusion. It's not faith. It doesn't have faith. It's just saying here's the probability yeah. based on the evidence. So are you a computer? Someone sort says. of yes. My beliefs are. <laughs> so you're just. Do you uh, do you believe in free will? No. You don't believe, believe in free will. No. Nope. So we're just biological robots. No, we're deterministic robots. Um, Okay. Yes. Determinist. We're just, we're just random evolved monkeys and there's no ought statements, but morality does exist, but there's no ought reason. So like, well, we're just oughts are hypothetical. So I tried to explain, you do have oughts. Oughts are if um, a hypothetical imperative versus a categorical imperative, you can still have oughts. So if you know what morality is and you say, I want to be moral, I ought to do what morality is. You do have oughts. That was, I tried to explain that earlier. But there's no reason to follow the true or false. Actually, we don't even, there's no, there's no truth. Because we could be determined to believe something false, biologically. Even if we were determined to believe something false, the truth would still be there. It would be that no. we were determined to believe because, something false. No, that because would be it, the truth. it would be truth. Yeah, exactly. There's only what is. There would never. There can't be truth and not. There has to be truth and not truth, and it requires choice. If there no is no free will, then truth then there's only what is. Truth. I don't, there, I don't truth understand false. anything you just said. So. Even if I'm determined to believe everything that's false or something. Yeah, that would be what the is. The fact there that is no I'm truth. determined to believe everything false is truth, right? That's, no, that's just that's, what is. There is no truth. They're just what is. What does the word truth mean? Well, truth requires the contrast, the false, and you need a choice between it. Because it would be true that you believe something false, but there is no true or false because there's only what is. Truth is uh, the property of a sentence if it corresponds to reality. That's what truth means. So like the sky is blue. Th that sentence descri accurately describes reality. The sentence is true. Um, but if, if I said I, the sky, if I said the sky was green and I was biologically determined, that's not true or false. false. That's just what is. That would that would be false. Would how be can false. there be how can there be a false? You need choice. No, like yes. Like if a, if a calculator says one plus one equals seven, it would be false. It would be that's wrong. That's just what is. That's not true or false. There is no, because it is true that it be, believes that there is no true or false. It requires choice. So, so before any humans existed, was it true that God existed? Well, on our, our worldview, there is free will. There is true or false. Before any humans existed, no humans, no free will. I don't know if God has free will or not, but yeah, before God has any free will, existed, we have free will. So, but God can't be wrong, right? God doesn't have an option of false. He just has true. He's got true as the only option. He doesn't have well, like that's a just false God option. is truth itself. So it's like right. there's nothing like him. Right. So like reality in my context would be truth itself. And so a, mm -hmm. a statement about reality would be well, true. That's just what is. It's not true. It's just what is. Like 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 God. God is what is in your worldview. Mm-hmm.
So, so that's, that's I know, true. and he created humans with free will, and we can choose between the good, the evil, the truth, so, the false. So, um, you may want to Google the definition of truth in philosophy. Truth is a is the property of a sentence, and whether or not it corresponds to reality. I don't, I don't understand anything you're saying about like you need some kind of con. You need like free will for truth. That doesn't make any sense. That means if yes, there's no does. free will, there's no truth. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, exactly. No, that's what I'm saying. If there's no free will, then there's no truth. Because let's that say makes I, zero sense. How does that make it, zero sense? Okay, so so if there is no free will. Would it be true that there is no free will? That would just be what is. There is no true or false. There's just what is. That doesn't, so if there is no free will, now if that sentence is true, then that would mean it is the case that there is no free will in this universe. That would be a true sentence. But but what you're saying is, is if there is no free will, that sentence isn't true, which means there would be free will. I'm saying it destroys the possibility of true and false. There would only ever be what is. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand what that even means. Like... <laughs> Okay. Okay. Let if if we're like, that, if, like it sounds to me like it sounds like you're saying if there's no free will, everything in the universe becomes a logical contradiction and just uh, no, 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 no. It's not logical. Sense. It's it, it's not a logical contradiction. It's just what happens. Again, that doesn't make sense. Like tr if if truth doesn't exist, truth and false, then that means there is no logic in a universe. No if truth, truth and truth and false yeah. are properties of logic. They're not properties of free will. Yeah. So there's probably there's like, no logic either. There, there's only what a. is. It's like it's like looking at a painting. You don't see the painting is true or false. It's just what the painting is. That's what okay, the, so the world law of identity. Free. Law of identity. A equals yeah. A. Is that true? Yes, in this world. Yes. But it, it requires contrast. You what? can only no oh, no wait. You said true equals true, right? No, I what? said A equals A. So law of identity is A yes. equals A. Yes. So is the sentence A equals A, the law of identity, is the law of identity yes. true? Yes, in this world, yes, we have a law no. of identity. In which world is it not true? In a world where there isn't free will, because there's only it what is. It doesn't make sense. What? Okay. Because, like, so, but, so let's say, so let's let's say there's, say a world, there's a world with no free will, and I ask, does A equal A? And you're like, no. In this world, A does not equal A. That would just be what is. It doesn't make sense. But literally does not does not like A equals A in all possible worlds. That's what logically possible means. There can't be a world where A doesn't equal A. That would literally be logically impossible. Well, That's, think of a world with two choices, true two and false. Choices. It, it requires two options. If there's only one option, it would be true because I would like I would that would be what is. That it would make, like okay. Oh my. Help help me help me here. So there's a universe with no free will and I ask does A equal A and you're like no. Okay, well, so if A does not equal A in that universe, that means there is a logical contradiction because mm -hmm. A equals A is a law of logic. And so if A does not equal A, if it is not true that A equals A, that means there must be a logical contradiction in the universe. Or I'm not right? There's there's no truth. There's no false. There's no... Because whatever I'm bio biologically determined to believe, I would just believe oh that. So, so again, so if A does not equal A in a universe with no free will, that means there's a logical contradiction, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's why free will is anti -lo is it's not logical. If you deny free will, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know how to respond to that. I got if there's no free will, a does not equal a. Like, okay, um, that doesn't make sense. All right, let's go. Let's well, go because a okay, no, no, okay, because just think, if I was in this world, you were logically determined that you would you say that, and that there wouldn't be true or false. It would just be what is. That's just what you're saying. I, I, I don't, I, you say those words again, but I still, those words still don't make sense to me. Like if A equals A, it's true that A equals A and it doesn't, you don't need free will for that. Free will doesn't make that any more or less true. Like you still need truth, even if there's no free will, like just A equals A is true regardless of free will. So is there, um, is there something false in this world without free will? Yes. Like all sentences that don't correspond to reality would be false. So like if a calculator says one plus one equals seven, that would be but, false. But wouldn't it be true that the, calculator says something that is false, but that would be true yes, because that's that what be it true. is. Yeah. It's a different sentence. So the, does the sentence, the calculator is saying a false sentence correspond to reality? Yes. That sentence corresponds. Yeah. To reality. So that's what I'm does saying. The sentence one plus one equals seven correspond to reality. No. So that's a false sentence. So a sentence that does not correspond to reality would be false, but it can, um, but it can, it could never say anything else. So it will always be true for the calculator to say that. So there's no truth. It would, it's the calculator is always going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's true that the calculator will always say one plus one equals seven. Yeah. But it's also true that the statement one plus one equals seven 
will never correspond to reality. Therefore, it's false. No, because that's just what's happening. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's let's go a different direction. Yeah. To me, I, I gotta I gotta head out in five right. minutes. But um, all right, sure. So, is there anything uh, free, you wanted to cover? Sure. Let's say free will seems logically impossible. Like it doesn't seem to make sense that there could be such a thing as free will. Everything is either determined or random. How can something be free? Um, logically, if because uh, as far as I understand it, it's only possible for it to either be determined by prior causes or it's not determined by prior causes, in which case it's random. So I don't understand how there could even be free will logically. Well, how I don't understand how there couldn't be free because look at you are here like talking with me, but yep. you could be you could like if we're in a debate or something and you're arguing, you know, you're arguing for what is true. But I'm biologically determined what is false, or you're biologically determined what is false. It destroys the pot. Why would we debate if there is no choice? Because we're all biologically determined already to believe a certain thing. What is? Well, we could either be determined to debate by prior physical forces, or there could be random interactions that cause us to debate, and either of those would cause us to debate without free will. So, like any action, any choice, any decision is either going to be determined by prior causes, which made it happen, or it was determined by no prior causes, zero prior causes caused it, which means it would be random. And those seem to be the only two options for any possible choice you make. It either has to be determined by prior causes, in which case it's determined, or it has to be determined by no prior causes. And if it's determined by no prior causes, it's random. So I don't see a third option for any, any given choice. That could so get you free what, what's the point of debate if everyone's just biological? It's not really you talking. It's just you're a biological determined robot. I'm a biological determined robot. What's the point of t even talking? I mean, we've already we, like we're never fun. Like, what's the point, point of fun? <laughs> what's the point of fun in this? These chemical Don't reactions mean, in our brain. Well, I'm not understanding how this provides a third option. So, um, asking what is the point doesn't give me a different option other than. It was either determined by prior causes or it was not determined by prior causes. Like it's, you know, philosophy, you know, a uh, uh, true dichotomy, either P or not P. Uh, in this, the question is, is, is something determined by prior causes, P, or not determined by prior causes, not P? And so it's a true dichotomy. It's either P or not P. And so there, you'd have to give me a third option to show that it's this is a false dichotomy. Well, both, well because both of those options require choice. If there is no choice, then there's only ever P. There's never anything else. There's only that. There's no other choice. We're de de determined. So, so P is a prior choice is determined by some prior causes. So not, not free, not choice. Not P is not determined by prior causes. So random, complete randomness. And so P is determined, not P is random. Neither one of those are a choice. How can you insert anything into this equation to get free will? Is there's no true or false. There's just what is. It would just oh, be yeah. that that be. I I gotta I gotta head out. It was nice talking to you. Yeah, it was nice talking to you too. It was a pleasant conversation. Do you want to give any links or references where people can find your work before you go? Yeah, just search uh, just search up like Orthodox Kyle and it'll um, show up on YouTube. But yeah, nice talking to you. Bye. All right, talk to you later. Have a nice day.